Nope. A measure of peace and satisfaction consoled Aragon. I will come. He comes. <laughs>my name's nerdy and i'm clever and this is the nerdy the wordy the book club welcome back for series two season two Ser series two yeah <laughs> Se series two it's gonna be a lot shorter than series one uh yeah it, yeah it's not gonna be two years because uh we already read this many pages after spending almost two years talking about the wheel of time clarice and i'll spend the next six weeks discussing aragon mm -hmm. eldest Brissinger inheritance and then spending two weeks on Christopher Paolini's new novel Murtag. Murtag, which is so fun because if this is your first time reading Aragon, now you know who that is. <laughs> yeah. Um welcome, welcome, welcome to the world of Alagazia. Um what? Nothing. <laughs> you got a little lipstick on your tooth. Which one? This one. This one? No, other side. That one, yeah. You're good. Did I get it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh yes, this is Alagazia. <laughs> Um, I'm going to start calling it that. What? I'm going to start calling it that. What's wrong with Alagazia? <laughs> it sounds like a spell. Yeah. Alagazia. Like... I like all gay Sia. Oh, Sia? You know what? Sia would love that, I think. I think she would. All gay Sia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Does the internet like her right now? Uh, I can't remember if people have like people were very upset about her movie. I can't remember if people came around on her after that. Didn't know she had a movie. Yeah, she put she out a movie fun. that was, like, about, like, uh, maybe I'm wrong. I, maybe I shouldn't talk on my ass right now. <laughs> Chat, am I wrong? Was The internet was mad at Sia for a movie that she made about an I don't autistic know. girl, right? I never saw it. I think it was called Music or I have lyric? no idea. All I know is I like her songs. Yeah. And Maddie Ziegler's a great dancer. <laughs> what does Maddie Ziegler have to do with Sia? She dances in all of her videos. Oh, does she? She's the girl, yeah, in like, yeah, yeah. I don't... She did the dance with Shia LaBeouf, Sh Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, I don't I think I've ever Cage seen... Thing. What? Okay, anyways. I think uh, the last, like, anyways. new music video I watched was... You know what, it's fine, we're moving Blurred on. Blurred Lines? Uh, I think ew, I saw that... Why would you watch because that Because it was controversial. Video. 
You know oh, what I mean? Gross! Get out of here! No, no, but I, but I think that's why. Is I was like, why are, why is everyone so upset about this? And I was watching it. I was like, oh yeah, I get it. This is fucking weird. Yeah, weird song, weird song. Uh, what's this up, is a chat? book club. What are we doing? Yeah, how you doing? How how how's everybody? I would actually actually could you could we could we do a poll? Maybe. Are, are we pulling a, a dusty wheel? I would love to are know we? who's like read the books before and who's like this was their first time. And who has is here but hasn't read the books. And, and they're just like, here? just wants to hang out. Arzu, thank you so much for that super chat. I didn't do my homework for this one, but I did reread this book a few times over a decade ago. I'm hoping to wing it and follow along. That's fine. Uh, you know we what? Got wing you. it and follow along is what we're doing as well. We got you. I know this book very well. Um, while you set up that poll, I, uh... How do I... I polls here, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, Start, no. There you go. I... Uh, first of all, thank you, Arzu. I appreciate that super chat. Um, Aragon is my favorite book series of all time, The Inheritance Cycle. Uh, I grew up with it. It's the one I read the most. It means a lot to me, and so I'm so excited that we're doing this book club. Um, I believe I have read the first Aragon book... Anywhere between 30 and 40 times. I kind of like lost count and like didn't keep track of how many times I listened to the audiobook. So, um, it's roughly in there. I, I do know this book particularly well. Um, Inheritance, though, the last one, um, I have not read in a while. All right, and there's I only a read like going. twice. Thank you for that. Um, you're welcome. Uh, and I've only read like twice. Um, but, um, I uh, actually brought this book to New York Comic Con with us. And we got it signed by a paling himself. That's right. Uh, there's a longer story behind that that we're not able to tell yet. Uh, but we're hopeful we'll be able to tell that story in the near future. Yes. So stay tuned for that. Um, if mm -hmm. if y'all are here, um, I, I am going to do my very, 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 very best. Uh, no spoilers past this book. I know people are reading ahead because we're doing one book a week. Mm -hmm. um, but because it's all kind of like... All the information isn't kind of in my brain. I, I'm going to try and be very careful in case there are people who, like, don't want to be spoiled on, like, later stuff. So we're going to be talking about each book as an individual and not really relating it to future stuff, okay? Yeah. No spoilers we're, in the chat for first-time readers as well. Um, we're going to... Well, Clarice is going to try not to spoil you guys on what happens after this point. I'm going to do a really good job of that. Um, unlike Clarice, I have, I, I've read Aragon probably three times in the past. Mm -hmm. um, but I have not read any of these books since they came out. Like, I, I think I read Aragon a couple of times going into Brissinger. Um, but then I read Eldest when it came out. And then I read Inheritance when it came out. Um, because I was a working actor at the time. And I did not have time to reread books before a new book came out. Yeah, that's uh, true. And so for me, it, it has been, I think, er God, when did Eldest come out? Do you know? Uh, I'm assuming it's like probably like 2008 or nine. But not 2000 and late. Jesus uh, Kevin L. Stevenson, thank you for joining the Nargs. 2008. Okay, so I would have been crushed it. 16. I crushed it. So thank you. <laughs> I haven't read Inheritance since I was... No, wait. Inheritance can't be 2008. No, Inheritance came out... Um, in That's what I was asking 20, about. Oh, sorry. I thought you said Eldest. No. no. Uh, uh, Inheritance came out... No. Uh, yeah. Eldest was 2005. Brisinger was 2008. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. It, it's either 2010 or 2011 because I know I was in high school. So here's the thing. I have not read... I read Inheritance once when it came out. Yeah. I reading this book made me realize I don't really remember this series almost at all. We've had some interesting discussions. Yes. I... There there were times coming into, like, the book, right? Mm -hmm. Where I was like, I don't remember Solemn Bum the Cat at all. And then as soon as, like, as soon right. as Angela started doing her prophecy, I was like, oh, I do remember this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I say Kevin L. Stevenson, thank you for joining the narcs? I think I did. <gasps> oh, Kevin. Glad the book club is back. I miss you, boo people. Miss you too, Kevin. Thank you so much. Welcome back. It's good to have you. And so the, the there's there's a weird thing going on in my brain where, like, all of this is, like, vaguely familiar, but I, could, I couldn't fucking tell you what happens next. I know, like, I, I, I know the one big plot point from Eldest. Mm -hmm. No fucking clue what else happens in that book. You know who I completely forgot existed? Huh. The dwarves. <laughs> oh, I yeah. Thought, you were like, oh, yeah, the dwarves are in these books. Like, I was like, yeah. Going into Aragon, kind I was like... Kind of important. What I remembered about Aragon was that they go... That was that... <laughs> I thought Brom died in book two. So this tells you a lot about my memories of these books. Because I read them when I was, like, 11, right? Yeah. Um, I, I Or, like, 14, I guess. Um... 
Somewhere in there. I thought the dwarves were introduced after the elves. And I thought oh. that Brom died in book two. Now, obviously, bo- uh, th- those aren't spoilers. Wrong. Those aren't spoilers <laughs> for later books because they, they happen, happen in, in this, this book, book. So if you're which here, you book probably should have read uh, this book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah there, there was a lot of, uh, there were elements of this book that I was like, I completely forgot this happened here. Um, yep. And yet, like, and yet it was still the book that I remember. Like, I st- like the things that stood out for me was Durza. I remember Durza really well, partially because of the movie, you mm-hmm. know, the, the, mo- giving, the movie giving him a face mm-hmm. really helped. Um... People are saying that the name Murtag of the fifth book is a spoiler, but, like, it could be a prequel. Is it? I'm not going to say. No, no, no. I'm saying, like, it, how is it a spoiler? The book is coming. The book's out in, like, ten days. Well, because it means that that character is alive at the end of the series. Unless it's a prequel. In which case... In this world, it really doesn't. <laughs> That's not... But Yeah, it's but all like, good, guys. It's all good. It's there all are, good. There are ways... There are... Yeah. This world has magic. Yes. Um, I thought it was a prequel, so I did not realize that it wasn't until now. It could be either. I'm not going to say anything. Oh my god, you've got to be kidding me. Okay. Well, I guess we're dealing with the fucking yard work. It wouldn't Sorry, be book y'all. club if there wasn't a fucking machine going off outside. Um. So, yeah, no, I, I just, I don't remember anything. I'm so excited to read it again because I know I like these books. Yeah. Like, this yeah, was yeah. a world that I was always excited to read. Mm-hmm. Um. And so I'm excited to go through them again with you here because I know I like them, but I have no memory of them, <laughs> which I think is hilarious. Like I, I love that. I love yeah. that. Because like, I'll be like asking you questions or you'll be like, oh, I forgot this. And I'll be like, how? Yeah. Uh, but that's just because I know, I know, especially this book in particular so well. Yeah. Um, I love it. I, yeah. I do love it dearly. Completely forgot about Auric. And then as soon as I saw Auric, I was like, I like this character. <laughs> I know I like this character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Forgot about him. That's okay. That's okay. We're we're here taking re taking or retaking this journey, depending on uh, on who you are in the chat. So, um, Clarus, um, you you haven't read this book in a few years. Yeah. Uh, you did a mixture of audiobook and book reading. Yep. What do you think of Aragon, the first book? And give your give your little mini review. Uh, mini review. Uh, I have a lot of nostalgia for this book. Um, I love it dearly. Um, is it the most beautiful written prose or the most complicated of stories or the thickest of plots? No. No. Yeah. Uh, you know, Paolini was 15, uh, when he wrote this, and I was only a few years younger when I first read it. Um, and so at that point in my life, it, I think it was perfect for me, which is mm-hmm. why I have such a love for it. Um, uh, there are things that I picked up on, um, actually even still, not, not that I necessarily like missed, but like, um, uh, more like foreshadowing things and like more in depth of like how characters are written and I'm yeah. able now like, with the life experience that I have. And I think, honestly, with the two years of the Wheel of Time book club experience that I have, okay. I'm able to, like, analyze more why I like certain things about it and certain characters and, like, what actually works for me. Yeah. like I said, before we did Wheel of Time book club, I didn't really stop to think about stuff as I read it. I went like this, and I did the fucking... Um, short circuit thing where he like flips through the book really really fast and that's it and I just took in all the information um but obviously going through the wheel of time stopping and starting finding things to talk about and like uh uh, practicing that analysis um kind of shone a different light on this book and it didn't make me like it any less which you know was something I like kind of worried about. I was like, oh, what if I'm an adult? And I'm like, this sucks now. But I, I don't I don't feel that way at all. In fact, I've actually found more things that I like about it because I can understand why I like them, if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And I also, I know a lot of you don't love the audiobooks, and, like, that's fair. I think I'm just so used to them <laughs> that I, I don't care. <laughs> Have you ever... Should we produce, like, a new audiobook for it? Okay, wait, wait. Have... Should we, like, get, like, Rosamund Pike to read Aragon? I'll do it. Um, who would be a good Who would be a good audiobook narrator for Aragon? Because I don't think it's Rosamund Pike. Hmm. I don't know many audiobooks. You know what I would love? What? No, no, no. I'm saying t- I'm saying if we're getting like a celebrity. Oh, who's got like a nice voice? You know, I I know I know the movie's controversial, but if Jeremy Irons read those audiobooks, bless, bless, but in the voice of Scar. <laughs> uh, that would honestly be great. I would I would love 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 that. Um. 
Like, act- like truly. Uh, the movie, garbage. But uh, Jeremy Irons uh, brings me joy. Uh, the Shadowling you- says, as this is going to be a only five, six episode season of the book club, how about The Expanse for season three? Shadowling, you missed the you missed the, the rock, paper, scissors. You missed rock, paper, scissors. Uh, we're going to be doing The Cosmere. Yeah. In 2024. Yeah. Possibly, possibly. Possibly with some Expanse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because apparently the Cosmere is a bunch of different series, so we might do like a series of Cosmere than like a book of the Expanse, or we'll figure it out later. Yeah, something along those lines, just to like shake things up. We also think in December, uh, before, I think we're going to start Cosmere with the new year, and in December we're probably going to cover Fourth Wing. Yes, Fourth Wing is like huge on TikTok right now. My aunt sent me two copies of it. I have a hardcover and a paperback. We have the British and the American editions. Oh, that's what that is. Okay. Yeah, so um, I literally have two copies of that book. Um, so yeah, we're we're gonna do this series. Then we're gonna do a one off over Christmas because people are busy. Yeah. You know, like the, it's it's a lot to start like a huge series. Um, even though most of you probably read Cosmere. Um, but that's gonna start in like the new year. You know, yeah. New year, new book club. Yeah, it's deal. gonna be fun. Have you ever heard the audiobook for Aragon? No. I really want to show you what Safira's voice listen, sounds like. We'll talk about it next week. Yeah. For now, we're already 13 minutes in. We've got a whole book to talk about. We got can't a do book. a 40-minute intro. No, no, no. That's fine. That's We've got to get it's into a... this. Uh, you gave your little review. Yeah. Do you mind if I give mine? I mind. No, I do not. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, it, it, it's, it's charming. Um, and it helps to know that it was written by a 15-year-old. Sure. Um, it is sort of like the hooked on phonics version of a fantasy story where it has like all of the beats <laughs> of traditional fantasy yeah. put together in a way that you can tell the author is a fan of fantasy. Mm-hmm. Um, but but not always necessarily in a way that I think makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. um, narratively. Yeah. Uh, that being said, it is such a delightful read because of the majesty that Christopher Paolini puts into his world. Yeah. And I think that the reverence with which Aragon looks at his travels and p- particularly his first moments with Sephira, um, I, I think that the, the that like sense of wonder that Aragon experiences mm-hmm. is so um, available to the reader. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. And the, the emotions that Aragon experiences are very available. I, I tweeted out the other day, I said Aragon... Reading Aragon is interesting because, you know, after two years of the Wheel of Time with all these point of views, we're so locked in with one character. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that that really benefits how simple this story is. Yeah. Um, And I I, I can't talk about future books. Never mind. Um, (laughs) But but, but there there are elements of this that I I was kind of like scratching my head at. Um, Right. But I was still able to enjoy it because it, the, the writing, while, a, you know, the prose isn't very complicated, I think gets across the feelings that uh, Aragon is going through really strongly. And, yeah. and sometimes it does that by just, like, hitting you over the head with them and being very, like, I am upset right now. Yeah. You know what oh, I mean? yeah, yeah. He, is, he, he, he feels like a 15-year-old. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And, and because we have, because thought speech exists within this world the Chris Paolini uses that to really give us a strong sense of what Aragon is going through the whole time. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that, like, the, 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 we'll talk about kind of the two big narrative moments that I don't think, like, necessarily work for me mm-hmm. as we get through it, um, particularly the, like, turn to the finale, um, which I think just kind of is like, and it, it's kind of like a lot of streaming shows finales where it's like, it's finale time, baby, it's <laughs> happening right now. And you're like, yeah, yeah I guess, yeah, like, sure. Oh, the Urkel? They're here. <laughs> We're going to war right now because I don't want war! this book to be 500 pages. So I mean, yeah. we get a 15 page finale and then we're out of here. It's to a be nice... fair, it is 499 pages. <laughs> oh, your version. Yeah, my, my version is 540, I think. No, no. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it, you know, it, it just kind of like makes a whoop to the finale. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a little not very clean. Um, but I never once wanted to put the book down. And I think that that is a testament to it. If you told me that like a forty-five-year-old man had written this book, I would be a little bit more like, really, You're okay, like, interesting, uh, hmm. okay, a little bit simple. There's only one female character, really. Uh, I, I no, there. I mean, Angela. Honestly, Angela is more of a character than Arya is. Well, and um, I, I don't know if you know this, but Angela is based off of his sister. That's very cute. Yes, yes. Um, that she's, is that makes a lot of sense. I, I, uh, yeah. He gave his sister a magic cat. Yeah, she is yeah. one of my favorite characters, and I think 
if I'm not mistaken, one of Paolini's favorite characters as well. Fair. Um, she's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's fantastic. So, yeah, I, I think, like, ultimately, like, I got to the end of the book being, like, it is it is less grand than it was in my memories. Sure, because yeah. Because things are always larger. In, you, when you read something as a child and then you grow up, your memory of that thing will always be larger than mm-hmm, it is when you're an mm-hmm. adult. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and, and I think that the female characters, you know, I, 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 I'm excited to watch them grow in the next few books. Yeah, um, there, there, there is a lot more, like, d- diversity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, with the, I, it's but not here's the thing, thing. It's not Sephira a is thing. female, so she's there pretty much the whole time. I know, but we're going to get into it. Sephira just gets a personality out of nowhere, and I don't... Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I really like it. I, I really, really enjoyed it. And mm-hmm. I'm one of the things that's going to be so fun, I think, for these next month, uh, and then talking about again in Murtag, because Murtag is so many years later. Yeah. Um, is uh, how that changes. Is how Christopher Paolini grew as an author as he wrote these books, right? Mm-hmm. They get a lot more complicated. They get a lot deeper. Uh, the the I really like the way this series ends. I know that it's not your favorite, um, but oh, I... there there's a choice at the end of this series that... It sticks out to me because I think it's such an interesting creative choice yeah. for a series that I think starts with a lot of very safe creative choices. Yeah, no, and, and it's not that I... D- I didn't love the ending of the series the moment that I read it. Yeah. And then I stepped away for a second and I thought about it and I was like, no, no, that 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 actually makes perfect sense. Um, yeah. But uh, no spoilers. No spoilers for that. No spoilers for that. Uh, we'll get there as... We'll get there in We'll, a few we'll weeks. grow as uh, Christopher Pilaney grew into... Uh, a series that uh, starts off with, um, I think, the strongest element of the whole book. Is the prologue. I think yeah. this prologue is so fucking good. It's fantastic. It. The, the, just the line, he quenched the fires in his path and left the rest to burn. You're like, yeah. this, this guy doesn't fuck around, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I. It's it's shocking how like clean a prologue it is because mm-hmm. it's simple you know mm-hmm. exactly what's going on it, it doesn't really do the thing of introducing words and concepts that like you have no idea what they mean like sometimes in prologues they like almost feel like they get ahead of themselves so that when you read it in the book and it's explained to you you're like oh that's what was going on in the prologue yeah. interesting setup and this is just very like uh, like clean and atmospheric well and the, the one of the things that i think a, a lot of series struggle with mm-hmm. is having especially fantasy series cuz all fantasy series start with characters in some like safe like uninterrupted farmland locale where (laughs) our local farm boy or farm girl doesn't know the wide world is dangerous and you know so much fantasy starts there hobbiton Mm -hmm. in the shire and how do you introduce tension immediately Mm -hmm. and this prologue allows there to be tension in the farmland story because the danger is so real right and i i really think that it works on a number of levels without having to have Brom te- like immediately saying that the world is dangerous to Aragon, which is yeah. how some fantasy series do it, right? Is like <laughs> is, is they would instead of having this prologue, they start with Aragon and then he gets back with the egg and Brom is just immediately there and it's like prophecy and you know they yeah, you jump yeah, into yeah. tension that way. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, you could do that. This book allows Aragon to be in town with his family for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Without having to have the, like, narrative lull that um, I he, some of my favorite things start with, right? Like, I think Star Wars A New Hope does this okay. Um, but if you've ever seen the version of Star Wars A New Hope that edits in the, like, Luke just, like, hanging out watching the space battle stuff. Yeah. It's dreary. Yeah. Because you're, like, by the time Luke gets R2-D2 and C-3PO, the like, movie's, wow. like, an extra oh ten God. minutes longer, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. The, it, and you already, there, there's already, mm-hmm. like, by modern standards, there's too much of the robots in the desert stuff already, right? Um, that stuff gets longer, and I think that the the team that kind of, like, cut that out and just did, we're going to do all the Leia stuff. Mm-hmm. And honestly, this movie, this starts the same way that that does, right? Yeah. Leia, the, Arya's Leia, she sends the plans to Luke. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? <clears throat> yeah. Um, Arya sends the egg to Aragon. Yeah. It, it is the Star Wars structure of the beginning of the story. Yeah. Um, but it, it's handled here in a way that has no dialogue, 
There's no, like, Arya the elf, what are you doing with that dragon egg? No, I think there's, like, maybe 20 words spoken in the whole thing. And sure. it's, like, yeah. the shade to the Urgles yeah. and, like, some magic, and that's it. Um, <laughs> Aragorn, did you put that egg in the cup of the fire? <laughs> Bronx said, comment. that's very funny. <laughs> that is a great crossover. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think that, like, I think that this is just a tight, little clean entry to this world mm-hmm. that introduces that magic involves words, that introduces Urgles, that introduces the Shade, who is, like, the big bad of this book, but doesn't get introduced until, like, 350 pages in. Yeah. Um, that introduces Arya yeah. and, ma- like, the magic system without really explaining anything and it's just like this is dangerous Mm -hmm. now let's cut over to a boy who doesn't know the world that he's should be scared of yeah and and that the that the prologue and his like chapter one like uh, are linked immediately yeah Mm -hmm. right we don't have to wait for him to meander around before the egg finally appears it's like we hit the ground running and we keep going um it's it was actually funny reading this book. I did not realize how many like things uh borrowed or referenced or or maybe not. I'm assuming he's read Wheel of Time, but like are are definitely Similar. influenced by the Wheel of Time in the same way that the Wheel of Time, Eye of the World, was very influenced by the Lord of the Rings, right? Uh yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And this is also very, very influenced by the Lord of the Rings. Oh a, th- a thousand percent. I mean yeah, yeah, book yeah. one is like I really like the twin tower or the the, the two towers. <laughs> Have you heard of Helm's Deep? What? No, the only, never. The only thing missing was, because um, I was like, oh, I know this book ends with Helm's Deep. <laughs> and then when they introduce Murtag, they introduce him with a horn. And I was like, do I not remember him blowing the horn at Helm's Deep? Is that the horn of Valir? Um, uh, <laughs> no, the horn of Helm Hammerhand. Well, that is a massive... I know, but I was like, does he blow the horn at Helm's Deep? He doesn't. Um, and I was disappointed funny. because I was like, it's very funny that he's introduced with this like ornate silver horn that he never blows. No. No. It... Yeah, no. When, when Murtag is introduced later on in the book, I was like, oh, he spent a lot of time with this horn. It, this horn must be important. It isn't. No, don't worry about it. He just... Aragorn's <laughs> like, wow, that's a horn. I've never <laughs> seen a horn before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a... Uh... <laughs> Don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, so we start with Aragon in Palancar Valley, uh, near the, the mountains called the Spine, mm-hmm. uh, which nobody goes into. They're very scary. Ooh. Um, but they're also in them. Yeah. I mean, it's, you've seen the map, right? It's such a weird... They're like, don't go into the mountains that surround us on all sides. But but, but even though they're on all sides of us, we're not technically in them. They're, they're like in the middle here. I, no, I, I get that. What I'm yeah. saying is that they are in the mountain range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If... if if but there are mountains on either side of you, and there's one way in and out, yeah, nobody you are leaves. already in the mountains. Nobody leaves. You don't go anywhere. People are like, this fine? Because <laughs> Galvatorx just mysteriously lost his army in there one time. Yeah. They just disappeared. They just Which disappeared. Which I love. <laughs> They're like, nah, never saw them again. Um, and yeah, Aragon is that, a... Okay, okay, but real talk. Yeah. That happened a lot over human history. We would just send people places they wouldn't come back and we'd be like, well, all right, we don't go there anymore. <laughs> Fair. Nowadays yeah, we got like radar and shit, but the like the Bermuda Triangle. W- yeah, we spent like a hundred years being like, the don't spine, go to Bermuda. The spine is the Bermuda Triangle. Actually, yeah. um, I, I I do love that. Uh, yeah, Aragon's just a fifteen-year-old. Well, he like turns fifteen in this book. Actually, he turns sixteen in this book. Oh, I thought it was no. Nope. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Sixteen. He's is, fifteen at the beginning. Sixteen is adulthood. Yeah. Um, Right, because he's on the road, and he was like, man, wow, I would have been uh, celebrating today. Whoopsie doodle. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, he is hunting a, a deer that yeah. he is injured, uh, and he is... Um, he didn't injure it. It's previously injured. It is injured. Previously on, Aragon, uh, the deer's hurt. And so, uh, <laughs> as he's about to take that poor little baby deer down, because um, he needs meat for winter, uh, th- an egg appears, scares everything off, and he's like, oh, this is a cool stone. Well, I can't get food. So I guess I'll sell this. Um, you know what's very funny? When I first read this book, I was like 12 or something, I didn't realize it was a dragon egg. It's like the most obvious thing. There's a fucking dragon on the cover. Didn't realize. When you Sorry, when you were how old? I don't know. I was like 12. Probably 11 Oof, maybe. Goodness. I know. I, like I said, I just read books. I didn't like stop and make predictions. I just like went through words. And when it hatched, I was like, Whoa! Like I had what did you think no this idea. book was about? I don't. I knew it was about dragons, but I, I truly <laughs> don't know. Like, I remember being surprised. 
Wow, he got a really cool blue rock. Yeah. When do the dragons, when does the giant blue dragon come into this book series? Yeah. No, they never. Guess we'll find out later. They never describe it as an egg or anything like that. I just, like, I was a child and I was not, I didn't stop that and think about so it for funny. two seconds. <laughs> I love that so much. Yeah, no. Yeah, had no idea. Um, you thought that he just got, like, a, a magic blue rock? I didn't think. Like, I, like, genuinely, like, I was just reading words. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're pretty. <laughs> Thanks, monkey. Thank you, monkey. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and so, yeah, he, uh, and this this begins, um, one of the things that I actually think this book uh, does a lot with in a very interesting way, which is uh, it takes him, like, a day and a half, two days to get back to town. Yeah. And this book is not afraid. And I think that um, it's one of the things that I think Paulini's really good at uh, even at a young age, because a lot of authors are very afraid to have any sort of like time in their books. They want right. it to be just action. And this book, d this book is willing to really have the like passage of time exist. Like this, this entire novel, there, there isn't a lot that happens in it. But th what does happen occurs over the span of about mm. se six or seven months. Yeah, at least that. Yeah. Um, and so when you do get to um, later on, when they when they do start having to like go day by day, um, and it's not just like a week passes. Yeah. I, I think that uh, that aids the tension at the end of the book of how time passes at the end. Because things move so fast. Because things are a little slow at the beginning. And, and yeah. it takes a realistic amount of time for them to get places. Yeah. And I really appreciated that because it made the world feel much more lived in. Absolutely. You, like, they have to wait for the traders to show up before they can even look at the egg. Yeah. Um, Arzu, welcome back to the nerd table. I remember being terrified my first read that he might actually take a hammer to it. Well, that guy, that guy slaps it with a knife. And then Aragon does. Does he? Yeah, Aragon takes a hammer. Did you read the book? Aragon <laughs> takes a hammer to it, and then he's like, well, that oh, didn't work, and he grabs sound. a chisel, and he tries to chisel the fucking egg with a chisel. Yeah. Yeah, after that guy is like nothing could like yeah. touch this egg, and he's like, "All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it." And he's like, "Oh no, he was right. Shit, he was right." Yeah, <laughs> Sephira, Sephira canonically gets out of the egg because she's like, "Who the fuck is banging on my egg?" She's like, "What the hell is going I gotta on?" Gotta go eat this motherfucker. Oh, he's right. cute. He's, 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 just, uh, a he's, okay. he's, okay. he's, he's just a little guy. He's okay. He's okay. He's just a little guy. Yeah, yeah, but like a lot of time passes. Um, what do you call that? What's the word? I don't know what the word is, but it passes like. Mm, doesn't matter. Cool. Um, uh, there's there's a lot of time that goes by before like before things like really pick up. Yeah, and it allows like the the amount of time it takes the Razak to get to Carvajal. Mm -hmm. It seems realistic, yeah. right? It's not like they're there the next morning. No. And so that I really appreciated. Yeah. I appreciated that, especially at the beginning, because, you know, it's, sometimes it's it's a concern that if you add too much time at the beginning of the book, it will feel sluggish or your mm -hmm. audience won't be able to stay engaged. Yeah. And I, I thought that he did a really good job of playing off that time. And a lot of it is because we are in Aragon's head, right? Mm -hmm. We get so much of that POV of Aragon's tension over time passing. Yeah. And it's not tension over the egg, which is what's smart. Aragon's tension is, are the traitors going to show up or not? Yeah. Which is good world building. Is Roran something... going to leave me? <laughs> well, but, but even before the Roran moment, yeah. you get the, the, the tension of will the traitors show up and how weird it is and the winter... And everyone does, oh, winter came t too early or too late this year. What are we going to do? But, like, the, the tension of, oh, the traders aren't here. Mm -hmm. What does that mean about the wider world? This yes. place I've never been. Yes. And I, I just, I, I thought that was really effective here. Yeah, a, a thousand percent. Um, it's It sets up his relationship with Garrow and Roran really well. And even yeah. even people within the town. Um, obviously, you know, Sloane is a fucking asshole. And, like, Horst is, like, good guy. Um, I, okay. Horst is daddy. <laughs> so, so they do go into town. Uh, Aragon, uh, Aragon, uh, or no, sorry, before Aragon gets home, Aragon goes into town, yeah. uh, and has a fight with Sloan. Yeah. What do you, rereading that now, what did you think of that fight? I had the same feelings that you did, where, mm -hmm. like, and, and to be honest, I always kind of felt a little bit this way, that, like, that, that Horst thinks the fight is way worse than it is. He's like, you guys were almost at blows. And I was like, oh, I didn't read them as like yelling at one another. I read Sloane as being like, get the fuck out. But like, yeah. that's, I, yeah. I also just think Sloane's anger, I wish the book justified it a little bit better than his wife died in the spine. So he hates your family. Okay. Yeah. He's kind of just an asshole. Uh, yeah. I just, <laughs> he is bad guy. You know, 
I think that I think that that would have worked for me if it wasn't so pointed at Aragon's family. Mm-hmm. Like, what did get? I I wish that they'd just been like, hey, look, Garrow and Sloane dated the same girl in high school, and like <laughs> it ended poorly. And there's a bitter right. like just just something more personal because it seems personal towards one. It seems personal towards Garrow. Yeah, but. It, but it also seems like there's no reason for it to be personal towards Carol. So yeah. it's just kind of like, I hate your family, kid. It's, he's like, I'm just trying to eat, man. I'm 15. Yeah, he's like, I just want some food. Um, and once, once, the, once he's like, I got the egg in the spine, the anger after that moment I get, right? Yeah. Because he's like, get the, get the egg out of here. And, I, and that might have worked for me more. Sloan is like willing to work with him up until the egg. And then there's a flip because the spine pisses him off. Yeah. But the idea that Sloane just, like, hates Garrow's family because his wife died in the spine, I, I just don't, I didn't get it this time. And I was like, nah, okay, it wasn't the strongest moment. And, and here's the thing, like, I don't think, like, Sloane specifically, like, hates that. Like, I think he's kind of just, like, an asshole to everybody. No, he like, specifically hates get that family. And because Warren's like, oh, when, when, when Sloane finds out that I'm trying to marry his daughter, he's going to be pissed because it's us. Well, Not because it's, like, anybody. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I never, like, I... Hmm, I don't know if I ever read the beginning. Later on, yes. But I don't know yeah. if I ever thought, like, the beginning of this was, like, personal. Like, I just, like, thought he liked to fuck around with people. He's like, oh, you've got a pretty stone? Okay, well, I'll give you this hmm. little bit of meat for it. Ha <laughs> ha, fuck you. And Aragorn's like, well, I don't have any choice, so, like, whatever. Like, I'm not gonna, like, be goaded by this, like, asshole. That's interesting. I, I definitely got a vibe that it was personal with that family. But... Fair. Fair. That might just be an interpretation on our end thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, And I, like, it's not explicitly said that, you know, Garrow and Sloan tried to date the same woman or something like that. Like, it's, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, yeah. And, and I don't honestly think it's about Rorin yet because Rorin and Katrina have barely started courting at this point. Like, they, they become a bit more serious when the traders arrive. So at this point, they've m- maybe, you know maybe seen each other a handful of times like mm-hmm. I, I, I don't think that at this point in the story that that's it yet but I, later on yes I would have bought it fully and completely if the the tension between their families was that Sloane does not want his daughter marrying the poorest man in town sure yeah. like that to me could have been very interesting mm-hmm. um and, like, if it had been about his daughter, I, I definitely could have gotten into it more. As is, it, the, the scene was just a, a little bit... It, it felt funny. a little bit like anger for convenience sake so that we understand that Sloane is the one that betrays them later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's an asshole. Um, and so, yeah, it just wasn't... It wasn't my favorite moment. Um, but uh, then Horst comes in and Horst buys the meat for Aragon because Horst is a freaking G. Remember him. Horst For no great. particular reason. Whatsoever. What? Uh, just, just at some, just remember the name Horst uh, as you read the inheritance cycle. Um, okay, I don't get it. What's there to get? I don't know. What's there to get? You're s- s- being cryptic, and I don't know. There's more books coming. Well, yeah. Uh, like... And so uh, Aragon goes home, and we meet Garo, mm-hmm. who at first seems like an ass, <laughs> like just an awful guy, which is so funny because. The like immediately after his first introduction as being a total ass, he's very clearly not. Why do you think he's an asshole? Because he's he's just the 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 way he's introduced is like as like this like hard ass like grumbly like dick uncle, but then all, j- just just like the way it's described of him going home being like oh I'm really worried about how Garrow's gonna feel about and you and then he opens the door and he's like ah, get in here boy and then. But then, like, immediately... And, but then Roran's also like, I'm really afraid to tell Garrow about that I'm leaving. As if something okay. bad is going to happen. And then Garrow's like, okay. I'm proud of you, kid. You got a job. Here's the money I saved for you. And you're like, Garrow's great. Why are his children so scared of him? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Maybe maybe he's, like... Maybe he's got, like, a temper. Like, if something, like, does piss him off. I... I the way he's introduced, I was like, is do I not remember Garrow being an absolute asshole? Because the first... He's not around very long, so... It's, like, talked about as if he is. And then he is a great dad after that. And I'm like, I don't understand this at all. I think he's just, like, very, very set in his ways. Like, you know, like, he's like, we don't accept charity. You know, we, we if we can't live out here by ourselves, then we should just move in closer to town. Like, don't mm, let yeah, people yeah. think that we're weak kind of thing. Like, I think he has, like, his very, very strong feelings on certain things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. But, like, he's very, like, rigid, but he's not unkind, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's not around that long anyway, so it doesn't matter. 
Uh, I like this. Um, su a super drama says, uh, Garrow struck me as the type of guy that never lets you forget a mistake. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. Aragon's like, I found this stone and I have some meat. And he's like, I'll work off the meat uh, later. And Garrow's like, oh yeah, how the fuck are you going to do that? He's, Aragon's like, don't worry about it. No, he's going to, he's going to be a smith. Yeah, he's like, I'm going to help him on the forge. So, Okay, we get to the we get to the the forge later. Yeah, he has like all of this metal and shit. How horse? Yeah, where is that shit coming from? I don't know. They're in the mountains. I know that's tough, right? He's got like ingots. The traders probably like he probably does all of his trade when the people come through. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how metal smithing works. I don't, I like I. He just had, he had access to a lot of stuff. I was like, oh, this is not, he, Carvajal seems like a very small town mm -hmm. to have a smith of his uh, size and caliber. He's kind of the only one in the valley because like later on, someone comes to get their scythe done by him, right? And then it offers, scythe. is it a scythe? Isn't it hinges so, for the something mill? Something for the mill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, something for the mill. Like, like Horace clearly is the best smith within a certain kilometer mm -hmm. radius, you know? Um, and so I think he just was like, no, this is where I want to live and people will come to me and they do. Clearly. Like people no. travel for successful. days to get, to get horse work on stuff, I guess. So he's a, he, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. They're just, they're, there's gotta be like, if you're, if he's, yeah, it, it, it's the one way in one way out where I'm like, you're at the, like, he's at the very end of the road. He's like yeah. a great Smith in the most inconvenient place on earth. I want one of those yeah. horse things. Okay, here's what you have to do. You have to go six months north. You're going to find a valley between two mountains. You have to go months. through that valley. No, the world is not that big, which, like, I kind of do appreciate because... It's pretty big. It, it's big. I just mean, like... I mean, it takes them, like, a month and a half to get to term, right? Term? Term. 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 There's actually a pronunciation <laughs> guide. Yeah. Which is nice. Very helpful. <laughs> um, uh, so, no, it's horse is great. Um... We, we need to, let's skip ahead to where the action gets going. Yeah, the sure. World, the world, Carvajal's cool. Well, you know, the traders show up, they get the egg appraised. This guy's like, I don't know what the fuck that is. Okay. And then Brahm is like, I'm going to tell the most illegal story in the nation. <laughs> well, yeah, because like. <clears throat> don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Galbatorix is a giant dickhead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty much. With everyone Ram's here listening, spicy. Ram is feeling very, very spicy. I would like to bring the full might of Galbatorix down on this tiny town in the middle of nowhere of mm -hmm. innocent people who do not deserve his ire by telling you a very illegal story that you're not supposed to hear. I mean, they're cocky up in Carvajal. Like they, like they, 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 they are never cocky. See, they, they never see the empire except for the tax collectors, and that's it. Like, but so, so basically, Ar 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 they, they, they spend some time with the traders. Aragon tries to sell the egg, but can't because the guy's like, I, I don't even know how I would fucking. It's like, this. I like, would have to find a buyer, and then, You like, wouldn't get the money for, like, a year. Keep yeah. it for now. We'll figure it out later. Yeah, yeah, So then... <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh, Aragon hears some, like, propaganda from the Empire in the inn. Yeah! And I think... You, you brought it up to me that, like, Brom tells the story to... You were like, why the fuck does Brom tell this story, this illegal story, right now? And I was like, I always thought it was because those two traders showed up, and we're like, yeah, Empire. We love the Empire. <laughs> And Brom was like, fuck these guys? Like, I like I think that, like, he... I, I just thought that that was the reason, the influence of it. Because otherwise, I don't know why this year he just decides that, that he's going to tell this story. Yeah, because it felt like a little bit convenient. Because either Brom knows that the dragon egg is already there. Which he does Which I don't think he does. Yeah, yeah. So Brom is just like, I'm going to condemn this town to death, maybe. Well, no, Garrow is like, is like, Brom might, Brom would hang for that. But, like, they're not going to slaughter the entire town for the story. If those traitors go back and are like, hey, this town is anti-Empire, and they have a storyteller who tells this story about Galbatorix, mm -hmm. like, there, there's literally a chance that he is putting the entire town at risk by doing this. True. Also, that Brom, that, that, the, but that's the where book you put has it happened. Like that's like Brom, like thug life glasses. Like, <laughs> um, fuck, like 
He does not care. <laughs> I just, yeah, reading it, reading it when I was a kid, I was like, oh, this is such cool world building. And mm -hmm. reading it as an adult, I was like, this is irresponsible. Leave this town alone, old well, man. And here's the thing. Like, you could also argue that because Brom is clearly very closely linked with the, the Varden and yeah. the goings on in the world, he might kind of know that, like, things are getting stirred up and that the people of Carvajal are, you know, they're kind of, they're like, well, we don't like the Empire, but, like, we're kind of by ourselves. He might be like, oh, shit, things might get things might get bad soon because of what's going on in the world. This might be a, like, fuck the Empire, like, subliminal, like, messaging oh, that he's trying to, yeah. like, sprinkle through the town. You could justify it that way. But, yeah, it, I agree. It just kind of was like, oh, shit, Brahm, Brahm is risking it all for a story. <laughs> Which is fine. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it, just, it was an interesting... Interesting choice, Brom. Uh, and so Aragon hears this and is like, whoa, is that true? Cool. And then he yeah. leaves. He goes home. And uh, yeah. what happens? God, some weird noises in the night. Just a little meow. <laughs> meow. And Aragon's like, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that noise? It's the fucking stone that Clarice didn't realize was an egg. Uh, and out comes a, a wee baby dragon. A baby dragon! Uh, Aragon puts his hand on the thing. It burns mm -hmm. him. Uh, and... Don't touch baby dragon, y'all. he is in a, like, coma for, like, six hours. It's not that long. It's a long time. He's, no. like, writhing on the floor in pain. No, I imagine it's, like, five minutes. <laughs> it's, it's not that long. It's, like, a burning sensation. He gets the Gateway Ignazia... Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Silver palm uh, from touching a dragon hatchling, which... Which he immediately yeah. is like, I need to hide this with mud. I was like, oh, you're so smart, Caleb Widow Guest. Well, and then he, he buys gloves. Like, you know, he's like, ah, fuck it. Like, I don't, I don't, I get, know the you don't get the reference. But I, I'm sure somebody does in the chat. Um, thumbs up if you get the reference. Uh, yeah, so I, I wouldn't... <laughs> I think what is so funny about the way that this introduce is introduced is he's so excited about it because it's such a cool beat. He's like, I get to be, I I might be a writer. <laughs> and then uh, he's so <laughs> immediately like, Aragon is introduced as an entirely practical character, which I really love. Okay, yeah, he's a farmer. Yeah, he's very practical. Yeah, and and that's consistent across this book, right? He has he thinks very logically. He's like, oh my god, this dragon eats so much. Yeah, and I I do love that like they rather than just go full I have a dragon wonder. Christopher Paolini does a mixture of there's so much wonder about the dragon mm -hmm. and the, Aragon's like and and Aragon spends a lot of this book dealing with internal dread. <laughs> like, he, he's so worried he's about the future. Yeah, he really is, right? He really is. He, he's a teenager in so many ways. And I think that uh, Chris Paolini being a teenager, teenager at the time probably helps that. Mm -hmm. But I I think that he, he practically is like, oh, fuck, wait a second. This thing, I can't hide this thing forever. Like, yep. what do I do about that? Yeah. And I, I appreciated the the ways in which he, like, started that planning. And also, like, we get more of his, like, survival training. And he immediately takes Sephira out into the woods and, like, builds a nest. And, like, builds a leash. And leashes his dragon to a tree in the woods. Yeah, well, he's like, I don't want it to wander away or follow me back. Like, Thank God Horse bought them that meat. I know. <laughs> Could you imagine? But it's fine. Sephira can hunt for herself. She's, uh... Like, after she grows... She no, starts hunting for herself he comes, at like when she's at knee. knee no, height. no, he, he he comes back the next day and there's like a tuft of feathers. In the nest. Is that the first day? I'm almost positive. No, because she no 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 because the first day she's still um collared. It's after the like leash. He he takes the leash off of her because he's like I can't fucking it doesn't work and then. Oh, I thought it was. I think. Sooner. Than Whatever. Sephira goes really matter. fucking fast, um, and mm -hmm. uh. Shit goes bad quickly. Yeah, uh, she like doubles in size in a week. Aragon goes to see Brom and is like, hey, you told that weird story. Yeah, you told a story. So I, like. The traitor said some stuff about Asking for a friend. Should <laughs> you touch a baby dragon? What happens? Asking for a friend. Though. As he rubs his palm and is like, <laughs> I, what up? He's like, what is this? So like, if two plus two is four, <laughs> uh, what do I feed a dragon who's about four days old? Basically. Give or take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Rob's like, 
sit down, kid. <laughs> he, like, bruised him, too. I don't know why we're talking about this, but I'll fill you in. It, you know what? Brahma's probably bored as fuck. He's, he was a fucking, like, dragon rider, and now he's living in a small-ass town. He's like, all right, I can answer Wait, Brahma's questions. a dragon rider? What? Spoilers! Spoilers for the first book, uh, which you're supposed to have read. <laughs> it's fine, you don't have to. Yeah. Um, it's... <clears throat> oh, oh, we should mention that immediately they get a mental connection, Aragon and Sphera. Oh, no, that was like a week later. Or... No, it's immediate. He touches her and he can feel a... Con he, like, can feel something, but he oh, doesn't... Oh, sorry, yeah. yeah she yeah. doesn't speak right away, but they, No, 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 they but like they're, like, immediate... Because he start Because that... He He's like, I heard that uh, you can hear the thoughts of your dragon. And Brahma's like, no, that's wrong. <laughs> that, that's wrong. Whoever told you that, stupid. Who... No, no, no. He, that's not what he says. He says, who told you that? Yeah, and yeah. Aragorn's like, a traitor. What's his name? Dunno. I, I don't remember it. <laughs> uh, it's so it's so good. I I love this conversation. It's, it makes me laugh every time. It's really well done. It it's hides right, Brahm's yeah. intentions really well. Aragon like think it, it allows Aragon to think that he got away with it. Yeah. When he very clearly didn't. Yeah. You know. Brom knows exactly <laughs> what's up. Uh, it's Why do you think Brom doesn't get to the point with Aragon faster? Uh, because it's dangerous. Yeah, but Geralt, Geralt does die because of, like... And Brom says. Yeah. Brom is like, I fucked up. And I, I appreciated that moment. They're, they're, the, yeah. Our main characters fuck up a lot in this book. Especially Aragon. It, is it, the book is not afraid to have our characters not be heroes. Yes, yes. You know, which, which is so which is so refreshing after reading the Wheel of Time. <laughs> yes, yes. And and it was the one it was one of the things, like I talked about at the very beginning of the podcast, it, it is one of the things that I didn't really un, un, I didn't understand why I love these books so much and why it like really stuck with me, but it's because Aragon feels like a fucking teenager mm -hmm. and he does really stupid things. Like he makes wrong decisions frequently. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. you know, he is like rash and impulsive and like like, like, feels like a person that, like, I could relate to at that age. And also, like, can still relate to, like, uh, now, like, yeah. looking back on it, right? Um, I, th I think it's, I think it's incredibly well done because he, he doesn't feel like a 25-year-old in a 15-year-old's body, you know? Yeah. Like, sometimes when you have teenagers who are the heroes of a series, they feel, they're like, oh, they're very mature for their age. And it's like, well, no, let, let them, let them be a kid that fucks up and, like, learns the consequences firsthand, right? Narandit says they would fuck up less if they could read thoughts of people just by their face alone should really step up their game. <laughs> yeah, useful skill. <laughs> Very oh, useful. Oh, Wheel of Time, what a series. Uh, what a series. You. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we, we get that, and then we get... Uh, we get some knowledge about the the past of the the story between Galbatorx and the Forsworn and the Riders. Yep. And I think that this is one of the places where that like I I, I want to push back on some of the criticism that Paulini gets for this book. Oh. About it being um, very derivative. Because I understand that the backstory of Galbatorx here feels derivative in a lot of ways. The yeah. 13 Riders, there's elements of it. They're not the Forsaken, they're the Forsworn. <laughs> yeah, but there, there are some really interesting elements of it that I think are unique to this world mm -hmm. that I really do enjoy in that backstory. Particularly, particularly uh, the, the Galbatorx's reason for becoming evil... Uh -huh. stemming from his loss, mm. which is a emotional storytelling beat yeah. that a lot of the high fantasy that Paolini was pulling from doesn't do, right? Sauron is just big bad guy. Um, yeah, and Sauruman, Sauruman is just wants to be big bad guy. just an, an ancient evil wizard creature from space. Um that's what he. They, that's what they all are. They're ancient evil wizard creatures from space. Sure, they I mean, fall to the earth as comets. I don't know if he starts off evil, but yes, they I, fall yes. to the earth as comets. Yes. they're ancient evil wizard people from space. Sure, sure, sure. Yes, that is yes, canonical yes. to Lord of the Rings. Yeah. You cannot tell me otherwise. Um, Gandalf is an ancient good wizard creature from space. Sure. Um, they're all aliens. Uh, <laughs> but but like the Dark One in the Wheel of Time is an evil as old as time. Yeah. And Galbatorx is a man who lost his dog and became the most evil person on the planet because of so it. So it's Taken? Is that what the movie is? 
What's the movie where, where um, oh my god, what's his face? John Wick? Is it at it? They no, kill his dog? No, John Wick stays good. Oh, I don't know. He don't kills know. everybody because they kill his dog. Oh, okay, But okay, he's okay. still a good guy and a hero in that story. Okay, I've never He doesn't seen become that. evil. He's, jo- he's Keanu <laughs> sure. Reeves. Right, right, right. No, but yeah. I, I think that what Christopher Pellini does with the, the, the thing that feels derivative is he spins it into a more emotional... I find Galbatorix far more relatable as a villain mm-hmm. than the Dark One or Sauron or yes. the, the, the big bads of other fantasy series. Right. Because it his is... His dog died and he lost his mind. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that what's so fun about the setup of Galbatorix mm-hmm. is that you're like, oh, he lost his dragon. Yeah. That, well, okay, bad. I understand. Like, I, I've lost a dog. As the the backstory of Galbatorix mm-hmm. gets better, the more Aragon grows closer to Sephira. Yes, and so you have this villain at the head of this series, mm-hmm. whose backstory makes more and more sense the stronger the hero gets and the the stronger his connection to Sephira gets. Yeah, and so you end up in this position where you have set up a main antagonist for your series, mm-hmm. who will actually make more sense to the reader as they read. Yeah. And I think that that is that. a really strong choice mm-hmm. that that is surrounded by like the number 13 for the Forsworn and the Forsworn and yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. know, all of those kinds of things that yeah. do kind of just feel like they're lumped onto the pile of fantasyisms. Mm-hmm. But I think that if you, if, if you're able to like look past that forest and see the tree in the middle, mm-hmm. the tree in the middle that is who Gabatorx is and why he is, is fucking fascinating. Oh, it is. And it, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, he's a little bit evil Jesus, right? He like wanders the desert for 40 days and comes back with magic <laughs> powers. You know, he's like, he is all those things. Yes. But like it is, it is rooted in an emotional storytelling beat yeah. that makes him a fun, like, oh, I could see how I could become that guy. Yeah. And I, I really appreciated that. I thought it was a smart choice mm-hmm. and it. It is, it, that is more important to me than the stuff that gets put, put, poked at as being derivative. And it also highlights um, Brom's character more as mm-hmm. someone else who also lost his dragon. Yeah. And, like, didn't go fucking evil psycho. Uh, right? Like uh, No, but did kind of give up, right? Yeah, and did yeah. kind of like, How well, not really. Him, I guess he fought with the Varden. But. He, yeah, he never, I don't think, like, gave up. But, like, there is, like, there is a certain, like, dourness to him that, like... You know, I, I can't imagine having that connection, like, like, like this mental, this magic connection yeah. with the thing mm-hmm. and like losing that, right? Like, like, w- w- that's not something, you know, we can ever like actually understand fully, but we can relate to through our own experiences. And I love that we, in book one, have like two characters already who reacted differently to a similar event yeah. that happened um, and, and that is the biggest and that event is our main character's biggest fear yeah right like losing Safira would be the most devastating thing our main character could go through and so having your main villain and your mentor character both having suffered the greatest loss that our hero could suffer moving forward yes. is a really good way to set up the stakes of this world and um get into it yes exalted Khan, thank you for answering that um so I, I don't know. I, I, I understand some of the derivative conversation. I get it. But at the same time, I think that... There's more to it. There's more to it. And yeah. I, I don't I don't think that the the stuff that is pulled from other fantasy is any more or less than what Robert Jordan pulled from Lord of the Rings, right? So I think like yeah. if you're going to levy that criticism at this book, it's this, it is the same criticism that I would levy at Wheel of Time, the first, especially Eye of the World, right? Sure, Where yeah. Where Eye of the World was like, this is fucking... Gandalf taking the hobbits on a fucking adventure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I really think that I, I... And you know what's interesting? I don't think I was able to relate to Galbatorix as a kid. And so maybe it's that I'm 31 and I have faced loss and I have... I, 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 I've seen people die, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've experienced that part of life and I'm in a different place now than when I read the first book when I was, like, 11, right? Yeah. And for me, like, Galbatorix makes a lot of sense. Yeah. As a man who is... And, and we'll get more into... As we learn more about his motivations later on, we'll get more into why I relate to him and why I'm able to, like, really humanize him and understand where he comes from. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that that humanization of the villain starts so early in this book and is done so well while also admitting he is evil. And, like, yeah. just, just because those relatable things exist, that doesn't mean that he, it is okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it just makes him more interesting to me because I, I feel like... He he's feels he, like a person and not big bad evil. 
Well, and he's a therapist away from not being the world's greatest evil, right? (laughs) They needed the Pinkaja, I'm telling you. I feel like every, every villain is just, oh, in fantasy, they didn't have therapy. Yeah. Uh, Joe yeah. G, thank you for that super chat. Thank you for that super chat. <laughs> Increasingly sensible bad guys, Nega Forsaken, y- yes. You love to see it. They're you know? also very scary in these books, and people die. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, this this book's got stakes. Yeah. Juicy stakes. So, uh, so the, that conversation happens, uh, and Aragon goes home. Yeah. Uh, Roran, uh, meets up with Katrina a couple times, it's cute. Uh, Roran leaves to go be a miller for um, the winter so that he can raise enough money to... Uh, th- and this He is wants a, to marry her. And this is a very traditional thing that used yeah. to happen, right? Like, you'd go away, you would raise some money, enough money to come back and build a house for your wife. Yeah. Uh, and then marry her, and, and then you would start your own little farm next to your family's farm and yep. help your dad out, but, you know, run <laughs> your own thing. Yeah. And uh, it's cute. Yeah. Um, and, remember these characters for later books. Garrow has that moment that you pointed out, right? Where he, like, gives his blessing. It's so cute, To yeah. To Roaring, and it, it really is beautiful. And, like, I love that, like, you, like Aragon still, like, feels really salty about it, you know? Like, he's, like, yeah. mad about it, even though he, like, understands it on an intellectual level. I don't know that he's mad. I don't think mad's the right word. Yeah, okay. I he's emotional about it. He's, he's, he's frustrated that the world has to change. Yeah. And I think that it's so funny because this series is one where he is going to be the mechanism of so much change for the world. Yeah. Right? He is, much like um, Rand Thor, right? He is the, he's kind of the linchpin upon which the decision making of the future of this world hinges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that that... That starting that character out as the one who has this very teenager-y emotional response to a very simple change, mm-hmm. which is that Roran is going away for like six months. Like, you know, it's it's the same. Uh, I'm sorry to throw my little brother under the bus here. Um, <laughs> but the first time I went back to my, my, my youngest brother is about seven and a half years younger than me. Uh, and so when I was in my first year of college, he would have been about 10 or 11. Mm-hmm. And so I came back for winter break and... Um, we had Christmas with my family and then I was going back to college in New York and my brother, he gave me, I have it somewhere. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I want to show it, but, uh, he gave me this little note that had, (laughs) it was like this very sad note about how he was sad that I was leaving and it was very cute and he was crying when he handed it to me. And then there's a photograph, like a printed out photograph taped to it of, him not looking at the camera getting off of the school bus and i was like who it it, it looks who took this photo it looks like the photo that you use in a television show to be like this is the photo we found in the stalker's house of like the stalker taking a photo of a child getting off a school bus mm-hmm. i was like who took this photo of you why do you have a copy of it ready to give to me it was yeah, very yeah, confusing yeah, yeah. and next to it is a sticker that he put on the paper that's like this big emoji sticker, but it's like a sad face with like a tear. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing I I've ever been handed it. in my life. Oh, I love that But so it was much. so sweet. And in this moment, like Aragon, <laughs> maybe, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll post on Instagram just to tease him. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> it's so, <laughs> when you see the photo of him coming off the bus, you're like, you're like what is that why photo? does this photo exist? He's like, I look so cool in this photo. <laughs> No, I think he looks sad. No, but he thought he looked cool in that no, photo. No, I think he was intentionally being like, "This is me. This is how I this feel is right me now." Looking sad. <laughs> and so, um, I that the, the, the Aragon reminds me of my brother in that moment mm-hmm. of like, "Oh, don't go to college. Let's let's live this like let's be teenagers in our parents' house forever, where it's easy and where nothing yeah. has to change." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. I, it's so sweet. It's such a sweet, like, feeling from him, and, like, the emotion is so strong. Mm-hmm. But but I don't think he's angry, right? Like, I, 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 and I think that he would outwardly portray it as anger. Right. Because as a teenage boy, he's unable to process his emotions properly. Yeah, 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 and I yeah, think yeah, that yeah. that is really good writing on Paolini's part. Yeah. I think he captured that version of teenagehood really strongly. Here. Yes, yes. That is that is like the biggest thing like going through these books as an adult now that I I can understand. Blue, thank you for being a Blue. member for 21 months. Welcome, Let's Byron. go. Good to have you here. Thank you for that. Um yeah, Let's yeah. Go. No, I think that is one of like the strongest parts of the book to be honest. Um 
Uh, Ember Eye says, that's a good brother. My response to that feeling would have been to punch my brother at that age, most likely. Uh, I'm six foot four, and Brody was five foot three at that point. <laughs> so <laughs> That would have been a dick move. He was like pre-puberty. No, if he had punched me, I think that he would have just hurt him. Like, I, oh. I don't think he could have reached my head at that point. He was a little guy. Right. He's big now. Yeah, he's, 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 he's almost as big as you are. Almost as tall yeah, as me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, gave almost. Gave an absolutely incredible speech at my wedding. Yeah. Um, you can actually see that on, a, yeah. on this YouTube channel. If you want to watch our, our wedding. Our whole wedding. <laughs> uh, but Brody gives a speech in that wedding that I was like... It was really good. Yeah. yeah. Really, really impressed. Yeah. Uh, and I love him dearly. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I we get this great scene. I, I really like that scene as well. I, yeah. I like that... I flip again. It's a derivative narrative beat from a lot of fantasy of the like um, father figure who's going to die. Spoilers. Uh, gives advice. We're an hour in and we're. Still I know. I know. Yeah. yeah got better move. Uh, but instead of it being directly to Aragon because we know that he's the main character, he's like, "This is for you, Roran." And Aragon, you're here, so listen anyway, because this is a good advice. Yeah. And so it like it takes that like it takes. Aragon being the main character out of the decision for this to happen, which yeah. I actually think is a nice choice. Yeah. It yeah. seems a little bit more naturalistic. Oh, yeah. It's not like before this character dies, he must impart wisdom and yeah, he just yeah, yeah. randomly blurts it out one day over the dinner table. It's like, no, there's there's a reason for it. Yeah. It's not even directed at our main character. Um, I, yeah, I think it's like cleverly done. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, Garrow dies. Uh, Aragon's out. Uh, Arag Aragon realizes that there's danger, uh, and Saphira is now just large enough for him to ride. Saphira talks now. Saphira yeah. immediately has a full-ass personality, uh, and knows bigger words than Aragon somehow. Don't know where she got but them no, from. No, he spends, m like, weeks as she's growing, talking to her all day, every day. Yes, and then she speaks mm -hmm. like she lives in a library. Well, not the first time. She's like, Aragon. And he's like, is that all you can sure. say? And she's like, yes. But Ara she very quickly, her, I understand that she's smarter than Aragon, but her knowledge of language, which can only come from him because she has never met another person. Well, actually, no. So this is mentioned in the book. It is not really like delved into at all, but the, the, the ancient memory connection that Saphira has to her ancestors, I believe, also fuels her language and personality. Um, yeah. So she she has, like, like magic Duolingo? Well, no, it's not about language. It, it is has about to be, though. She experience. Gets, she gets English from the past, then. She has, like, memories, almost, and, like, feelings, and, like... Yeah, the dragons are all connected in some way through magic, which is, okay. is fascinating, but they do not get into it in this book. So. It's, I just, I, I did find it very funny that all of a sudden she's like, hello, my name is Safira, and I have, I, she like gets a personality no, out of. No, her, no. No, 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 like, I, no, I know, no, and he gets the name from Brahm, I get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that, I think, and I think I said this to you earlier in the week, I kind of wish she had a little bit more of a teenager phase with him. Because mm -hmm. she seems to, like, almost step into mom role mm -hmm. very quickly for, like, she's, like, six days old. You know what I mean? And I just, yeah. I wish that there was a little bit more, I wish we could have seen her character grow into her personality a little more. Instead of just, one day Aragon goes outside and she's gone from being, like, Aragon, food, hungry, eat, to... My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Right, and Aragon's right, like, "Holy right. shit! You 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 do sentences now." Yeah, I mean, I like I definitely feel like Safira acts like a teenager as well, with like her, her like stealing away Aragon because she's so frightened, um, and like carrying him into the mountains. And um, a lot of the things that happen in book two, which we won't get into as well, but like there's there's definitely stuff that like, while I feel like. Safira isn't isn't an idiot in the ways that Aragon is sometimes an idiot in this book. Mm -hmm. Like she has her own flaws. Um, but I don't actually think we get into them too much in this book. So I, I understand, uh, like, where you're coming from. I, I, I think that she has flaws. Mm -hmm. I just think we don't get to watch her grow into those flaws. Yeah, yeah. She just is, she's just kind of fully formed. Yes. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. It's it's not like the end of the world. It is just... It is just an element of the books. I, I wish that we could see her grow a little bit more. It's all. better than in the movie where she flies into the cloud and comes back and she's fully grown. 
Is that what happens? Yes, it's so bad. Oh it's wow! So, she literally flies through the clouds. Well, and don't then say anymore because we're gonna we'll watch at some point. Um, because I don't remember it very much at all. Uh, so we get, but <laughs> but but we get Sephira is large enough uh, to carry Argon, which we know because uh, he's like danger, and she's like get on my fucking back, we're fucking getting the fuck out, or not on my back. I think she grabbed no, she, yeah on her, yeah, because yeah, his leg skin rubs off completely. <laughs> yeah, so they fly into the mountains for hours yeah. and he her scales are hard, giggity. Uh and so uh he is just chafed uh all over them that groin. Yeah, yeah. His inner thighs are gone. Yeah, uh, scissoring which, like, it works better if you don't have a penis. Or if you don't have scales? True. Maybe I think that's do, the takeaway. Do away. dragonborn scissor? Do dragonborns scissor? Well, I think scales on scales is fine. I but not like D&D. scales on skin. They might. Sc- scales on scales. Scales on scales. Skin. On scales. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's it. This like imagery always like I'm like God because it's it's like visceral. Like he like gets off her back and then like, he can't walk. Yeah. His legs mm-hmm. are like actually ruined. Um, Fabu, get the fuck out of here. It, but that's not even scales, right? Like, like if you ride a if you ride a horse bareback, that same thing will happen to you. Okay. You will chafe your skin off. Oh, I never. over hours. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like it, it's it's yeah, it, yeah. It's painful. Yeah. It's yeah. rough. It sucks. Because Safira is terrified of the Razak. She doesn't know exactly what they are she, like, but she calls them oath breakers, egg shatters. Like she like has this intrinsic knowledge. Of who and kind of what these things are. Magic memories. And and all, well, yeah, it's the yeah this ancient like connection. Which or conveniently it is, give her only the information the reader does not yet know, uh, or yeah. the reader knows, but you know. <laughs> yeah, um, but because yeah, she's, she's Aragon terrified. has to learn stuff from somebody else. Otherwise, <laughs> it would just be Sephira tells Aragon the story of <laughs> the inheritance cycle. Could you imagine? It's all like just her narration. <laughs> or, or every time Brom says something, she's like, "That's true." <laughs> that did happen. Yes, that is I can that remember is correct. that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she like, yeah, she remember. she knows some things, but not others, and whatever that is is just very gray and ambiguous. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, Aragorn's like, uh, you owe Garo a debt because you took care of me and I took care of you, so don't be a fucking coward. And she's like, okay, fine. Um, they fly back, and they're too late. Garo is dead. They, they sleep the well, whole night, not, though. not dead. Yeah, because Aragorn's like, broken. And we get the first instance of like, just like get, I'm, I, I am a tent, and I was like, "This is great." Yeah, with the wings, she's like, "No, you're fine. You're fine. I just put this over you. My body heat. I got you. It's like us." Yeah, except yeah. I. What? No, what? Like you keep me warm. If there's also a blanket, but like. <laughs> That's the tent. Yeah, but I am not the tent. No, you're the heat source. Yes. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. yeah. You are the source that of is heat. Fair. Um, yeah, they get back, and the the farm is exploded. Um, Garo is. Yeah, which there. fucking how. Um, oh, well, I can't. Okay. Uh, but the Razak spoilers. cannot use magic. Correct. And Durza's not with them. Correct. Do we find out what happened there later? Um, it's like inferred, like, this isn't really a spoiler, I guess, but the Seether oil. Blow shit up? I mean, it is like kind of a bit of an explosive, like... Like, uh, later on, they, like, throw it at something, and it, like, it bursts into flame. Like, it's, it's, okay. yeah. Okay, here, here, here's why that's weird to me, though. It's not, they didn't need to blow up the house. No, and Brahm is, like, I think they did it in such a spectacular way on purpose. Sure, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, He's, yeah. like, they, Brahm is, like, they had no reason to fucking do that. Because I was, like, they could have just gone in there. Like, what's Garo gonna fucking do to a couple of resigns? No, 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 they, they wanted to make Garo suffer, which is why he has all these horrendous burns on him. Uh, Kyle, welcome to the nerd team. Oh, they, they just threw the sea throw out. <sighs> y- yeah, they, they tried to make it look as aggressive and, like, heinous as possible. Um, this, okay. Because the Razak are evil. This is a great time to get into. Uh-huh. This is this is the element of the book that I I really like this book. Yes. This is the element of the book that works the least for me, mm-hmm. which is the Razak the, Riz, the everything to do with what the Razak want to accomplish is fucking insane in this book and involves like a level of mental gymnastics <laughs> that I will never I will never be able to wrap my head around. The Razak know that there is a dragon rider here. Mhm. 
Or no, that the egg went here. They don't actually know that it They hatched. are looking for the egg. No, well, and they probably know that it hatched because they they've that all the claw marks and shit around. So they don't mentions. even know that the egg came here until Sloane is like, yeah, that guy had a fucking stone. Sure, sure, sure. But then yeah. their plan is to kill Garrow and fuck off on the off chance that the dragon rider cares about Garrow enough to chase them. I mean, it's his uncle. So. so they do. So Braum is like, okay, I'm coming with you. We're going to go chase them and I'm going to train you as we chase them. Mm -hmm. So, but the, the Rezac need Aragon. And so they lead him on a merry chase across the world. At what, at some point they're like, fuck it. We don't need him to chase us anymore. So they fly away and Aragon and Br leaving Aragon and Braum in the middle of nowhere. Like, hey, fuck, I don't know. What, I don't, I don't know what to do. Maybe they were like, oh, they, they're getting too close. We got to get out of here. What did they want? I like th this. This is where the book like just is. I, I really can't wrap my head around the bad guy's plan here, mm -hmm. which is to capture Aragon by knowing exactly where he is and then leaving and hoping that he follows them. I genuinely don't think that they feel like they can capture him without taking injuries because they fought Braum and Braum was like way stronger than they thought, right? And the, the and so that happened. And then plus Aragon also has a dragon. Um and so I honestly think that they're trying to lure Aragon away, but also they have to go back to the king and tell him what happened. Be like, Hey, so we found the egg and it hatched. What do you want us to do about it? I, I think that if you showed up and he's like, okay, where's that? Where's where's it now? And you're like, oh, we don't know. We left. Galvatorix I mean, kills you. They know that they're not gonna fly away because they got horses, right? So they kind of can, because because they the the rats like fly, right? They yeah. they the, the you see the gouge mark. So they fly, report back to the king. And they're like, well, this is where we last left them. They can't have gone that far because they're only on horseback. They don't know that Aragon and Brom are only on horseback. Yeah, I mean, I. I guess I just like assumed that they did because they why, knew why would they, they know were being that followed. they fucked up? No, 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 they don't know that they're being followed. They're like two days ahead. There's no, there's, the, there is no magic to, in this world that allows them to Aragon. know that two days. But, but who the fuck knows where he went? Where who went? Who, okay, yes. Where, wait, where who went? The Razak don't know enough about Aragon to know that he tracks them across the land. What if they get back? Okay, the Razak. Find Aragon, right? Mm -hmm. Kill Garo. Fuck off. Brom is like, you cannot kill them. We need to go to fucking Serta. And and suddenly Galbatorix goes to the Razak and is like, where did Aragon... What, okay, so what happened to the stone? And the, right. the, 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 the Razak are like, oh no, we left. Why, why would we have stayed there for, with the thing that you wanted us to find? We killed the guy and then we fucked off. Mm -hmm. And then uh, six months later, Serta's like, we have a dragon now, Galbatorix. And Galbatorix looks at these Razak and is like, why did you leave... He went to Serta. Yeah, fair. I honestly, I don't know. What if Brom had been like, if we go to Serta, I can get you an army to help you kill those fucking Razak. Let's go raise an army and go kill the Razak. And Aragon was like, yeah, great. That sounds like a fucking great plan. Let's go do that. The the Razak's plan is so fucking insane, and like it works until the Razak take off after weeks, weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks yes. of them riding horses. All of a sudden, they're like, well, I, I guess we rode horses long enough. Let's fly from this random field in the middle of nowhere. They have a deadline. Galbatorix <laughs> like, doesn't like if you're late. If you're late, you're dead. <laughs> you're either early or dead. <laughs> but, like, why Why there? Like, did, <laughs> did, were they like, we left our birds in this very specific field in the middle of fucking nowhere? Like, why? Why? Like, it, there's so many questions I have about what the fucking Razak were doing here that allows for Aragon and Brom to do all their shit, right? Yeah. Like, it, it's, like, convenient that it gives Brom and Aragon time to train. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's so much easier to find somebody whose dragon is, like, five days old than being like, ah, we'll get to the dragon in six months when it can breathe fire. I mean, to be fair, it's already been weeks. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's been like, yeah, but Saphira is at a size where she can barely carry Aragon, right? Right, when, right, When they're still yeah. in the valley. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I'm like, I honestly, the rest, like, you can you can try and fill in the gaps there and, and make it work. But, like, the, the book doesn't really make th th what, whatever they're trying to do work. Cause if, cause you're like, what, yeah, what is their plan? I, I, I couldn't tell you. But then, but then Aragon, so then the, their plan revolves around them being tracked. 
So they fly away, yeah, so they can't be tracked. Yeah, which is why so they plan... spectacularly destroy the farm, because they want to be followed. Their plan... Yeah, but they, if they want to be followed, you have to leave a trail to follow. You can't want to be followed, and then at some point be like, well, from here on out, we'll fly to Gilead. I always thought that, or like... To, um, I always thought that they, the like, Hellgrind. got nervous. Like, they were like, oh, they're, like, way closer than we want to be. We have to be back at Galbatorix. Like, mm, we'll come back and find them later. But it, it that's never, like... But they don't go back to Galbatorix. What do you mean? Yeah, they report to him. They don't go to Urubayin. They go to um, the Hellgrind. Well, they go there after, but they, they can fly. So they go report. <laughs> like, what do you report? Yeah, we found him. Well, yeah, they need... He might have been... needs to know that the egg hatched. Send that is a rider. very important information. When you get to the Urgles, send a message. Sure, yeah. Like... I don't know if I don't they, know if the they king might would, have been they they might have been following us. I don't Galbatorix. know if the king would personally talk to an Urgle, but uh, he gets messages from messages. He gets messages. He gets messages. Um, so <laughs> no, then, I hear what you're saying. Aragon, that. Aragon, yeah, the boy who has never left the valley before uh-huh. is like yeah, the but valley. Like, the, but like Seether oil would have there there would be like shipping manifests with like. All, everything written down on a port city, right? And I was like, why the fuck would you think... Uh, this was one moment where well, I, I like that he's logical. Said, he's so, pra- like, practical. I, but practically... Yeah. What does... What does Aragon like, cannot can write read. write that shit down. Aragon cannot read. Yeah. We find out later he is illiterate. Yeah. And he is the character that goes, oh, you know how people write things down like that, yeah. right? Why would he know that he is illiterate? Aragon What do you mean does, why would he know that? <laughs> Aragon, Aragon, I'm a sure character who cannot take read. Inventory between him and Brom, uh-huh. you have two characters, uh-huh. one of whom is a, basically a scholar, and the other is illiterate. And if you if you need them to go to the place where the like shipping manifests have written down logs of where things go, why would you give that like idea moment to the character who doesn't know that things you get written what? down? It should have been Safira. She's like humans write shit down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it is like a little bit weird that Brahm is so shocked at that revelation. Um, I think it should have been like, oh, well, people like write down shipments stuff, right? And Brahm is like, oh, yes, there's records and blah, blah, blah. Like, he's like, yeah, like, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> but it is very funny that Brahm is like, hmm. That's a really good I idea. I never would have thought of that. We'll trace the seether oil. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, before they get there, though, they do pass through a town that the Urgles have raided. Uh, yeah, Zouak. Which is yeah. fucking... There's some dark shit in this book. There, It's dark. It's dark. Yeah. We're, we're going to get to another really dark moment that's fucking hilarious. One of the funniest things in the world later on to me. Oh, God. Okay. Um, Great. It's such that. a dark idea that, that is undercut by, like, one of the funniest things I've ever, like... <laughs> gotcha. Okay. And I, I was okay. so shocked when I read it last night that I was like... Yeah, so we'll there, get there. there's we'll a get baby there. on a spear yeah, in the middle of a they, pile of bodies. Yeah, they slaughter the entire village, pile them up in the middle, and put a dead baby on top. And uh, the, a, a, a crow comes down to eat the baby. Yeah. And... <laughs> Aragon says, not on my watch. Yeah, and I really, like, I, I think that one of the things I really appreciated about this moment, um, and in part because Aragon didn't really get to participate in Garrow's burial, right? And we're going to get the great burial for Brom later, but yeah. there, there's a uh, Aragon is a character who, while he is impatient and and you know anxious and all of those teenager things, he has a really like strong understanding of like the dignity of life, and he has a really strong belief in that. Yeah. And I thought that this moment was a great way of setting that up and um, re- really like diving into his anger at this beat with the the bird and the baby. And wanting to protect the dignity of that baby's death. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, the, the angst in both him and Brahm at not being able to bury these people and having to leave them like this. Um, I, I thought was taking a very dark thing that uh, helps the world building and builds attention and allows the world to feel more dangerous and risky. Yeah. While also saying something hopeful and, and filling the world with light through how our characters respond to it. Even yeah. in a way that they can't actually help. Yeah. I thought that was very strong. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There's a lot of, like... Like Aragon very quickly through this through this book, but also this series, like has like has these like huge like moral questions put to him. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he always takes he like he is always a bit naive mm-hmm. in his thinking, but in but in a an, in a kind of hopeful and beautiful way. Yeah, that like that uh, like 
I find very I find it beautiful. Like I I, I think that it's I think that's a strong choice, especially for our hero to have. Um, but uh, yeah, like like it's moments like this where it's like it's so dark and everything, but like it's his responses to it that that make it interesting. Because it could just be dark and bleak, and you're like, holy shit. Yeah. Um, but then we also get Brom um, being the dumbass uh, because Aragon is, uses magic to save Brom. Yeah. He says Brissinger. Yeah. Because he heard Brom say it to start a fire the other night. Yeah. And uh, later on, Brom is like, "You idiot! <laughs> Don't you know that magic can kill you?" And Aragon's like, "No." No, I wouldn't. know I that. didn't know I could do magic until that moment. And Brom's like, "Well, you should have known that because all dragon riders can use magic." And I was like. He doesn't say you should have known that. Brom, he, he is so upset with Aragon for using magic without knowing. He's upset and it's like, because he could have died. Yeah, Brom, if you you Who should have you should have introduced the idea of that from the moment oh, that yeah. he's a he's dragon rider. He's teaching him to spar with swords. Like he gives him fucking Zarok, this like beautiful like yeah, uh, sword. gorgeous sword. But like <laughs> then it's like the magic stuff. Uh, let's not worry about that. If you know, if you know that a teenager has magic. Because he has to, because he's a dragon rider, and he is an impatient and like fiery youth. You have to tell him immediately so, that he might accidentally do magic and it's dangerous. So instead of being like, ah, uh, I'll tell him that he is magical later. So after he's dead, Brahm is from the era where they they talk about this, right? They say all the riders can use magic. But but that is a very well kept secret, which is why the riders are so powerful. They Brahm was like, we don't tell people this until years into their training. And Brahm, like in Brahm's head, he's like, there's no fucking way that this child will be able to use magic for years and years and years. Okay, but okay, okay, but Brahm is also a hundred year old adult uh -huh. who should be smart enough to realize that the very safe confines of rider training where they were not under constant stress of death mm -hmm. and the Urgles were not trying to murder them in their sleep every single night is a different environment and that Aragon being a teenager mm -hmm. who is being chased days after his father figure was murdered in front of him will maybe manifest that anger in a way that you should let him know so, not to say magic words because they might drain his life well, force. Well, and, and he didn't know Aragon was go just going to, like, read, li like, just say a random magic word, right? Because the thing is, it, they, they, like, Brom knows exactly how dangerous magic is. And Aragon nearly kills himself several times. Like, in Brom's head, he's like, okay, I'm going to start with the sword. Okay, I'm gonna start with the sword. Yeah. We're gonna do reading. We're gonna like we're gonna train his brain so that when I finally teach him magic, he doesn't fucking almost kill himself, which is a, which is what Aragon does because he accidentally discovers it, right? Because Brom is from an age where like the the way that he was trained, like he is trying to implement that onto Aragon, which means that like he wouldn't have told him about magic for several years. Oh, a hundred percent. I'm not saying that this is bad writing. I'm saying that it is a failure on Brom's part to be sure, yeah, adaptable. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, like, right, right. Bra like Aragon almost dies, and Garrow does die. Like this is Brom's failure. Yeah. Not, I, I, I'm not coming at this like, I'm not trying to complain about the writing of this. I'm saying that like Brom as a character fails to protect people, and it is his destiny to fail. Right. Well, and that's why Angela last time um, she's like, oh yeah, he's like. His, like, fate is, like, a joke among yeah. our community. Because he is, he is, his greatest <laughs> failure is that he just, he's he's an idiot, right? Like, he's a dumbass who doesn't think. And he, he Brom shows very little ability to, like, um, I, I, Brom would be terrible at chess, right? Brom has, Brom sees one way forward and is unable to imagine a world where something else could happen. Sure, yeah. And people constantly die around him because of it. He is yeah. so narrow-minded. It's yeah, it's it's his ultimate downfall several times through, throughout his life. And because of his unwillingness to share and because of the way that he thinks that he has to do this, he gets people killed and he yeah. dies. Yeah. Like, Brom should be a much better tracker than he is. Brom should not... The, the Urgles and Razak should not be able to sneak up on him in the night, mm -hmm. right? But they are, because Brom isn't really very good at this. Yeah, he's, he's a very good only, warrior. He's the only yeah. rider left over. He is, like, the singular person. He, and so, yeah. He's, he's not very good at much, other than sword fighting and, like, and keeping secrets. Yeah. And, that, and, and, and you know, it's... And he cares... 
Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Obviously right, you know, like, I'm not if saying he was, like, he's... a perfect character or teacher, it, I think it'd be less interesting. But, I'm not saying yeah. he's not empathetic. I'm just saying yeah. that, like, he is not... He's not Gandalf. Yeah. Where he sees it all coming and he figures it out. He is a deeply flawed character. Yeah. And, and And that makes him a very interesting character. Yeah. It's much like Galbatorix, right? Galbatorix is this evil man who I can relate to because I understand where it comes from and he has this, like, tragic history that has led him down a dark path. Brom is a broken man who isn't... Sometimes fantasy series have the broken man who's also kind of perfect. And you're like, oh, his trauma led him to be the greatest thing ever. Yeah. Brom's trauma led him to continue to be traumatized because he didn't learn from it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think that that's why he's interesting, right? Brom didn't learn from his fuck-ups. He, he never he never learns from them. He just kind of keeps doing the same fuck-ups over and over and over again. He's like, I'm sorry that your uncle died because I didn't tell you stuff, so I'm going to continue to not tell you stuff and get more people, including myself, killed. Well, yeah, because he knows that Aragorn is a rider before Geralt gets killed because he, like, pulls the glove off of his hand. He's like, oops, He's not even wearing a glove. He just flips it over. He no, buys no. him the gloves later. No, he catches... Um, he catches the glove, pulls it off, and is like, oh, I'm so sorry. Why was Aragorn wearing like, gloves then? To cover it. He got himself gloves. Like, the, like the scene literally happens. He's like, And why does he have to buy gloves like, again later? Oopsie. Um, well. I thought he just had mud on it at that point. He got, he, the gloves got taken off of him when Gertrude is healing him, and he doesn't get them back. She's like, wow, that's quite a scar on your palm. Because oh, she, because they undress him, and yeah, yeah, so yeah. that the, those gloves just get left behind. Yeah, no, Brom, Brom's a great character. Like, I'm, I'm not complaining about the writing of him. I yeah. am just pointing out, like, he really, like, he, he doesn't learn his lessons, and yeah. then, and like, it's, and I, I think that that is in part a, a storytelling choice about the arrogance of the writers and how they fell to Galbatorix in the first place, right? Yeah. Like without that sort of arrogance and that sort of, there's a, tra you know, he's like, we're going to teach you the traditional way, but we don't have any of the traditional ways, any of the traditional protections. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's he's a fantastic character, but he's deeply flawed. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, they they go to Jode. Yep. Um, or Jihad, as I call him. Um <laughs> And uh, they go to Term, and uh, m much like every fantasy series, uh -huh. our little farm boy sees a city for the first time, and yeah. he's like, oh my god, it's so big. And everyone wow. is like, oh, it's not that big. You should go to this other city. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cool construction of the city. Obviously, the, the, <laughs> yeah. the tiers leading up to the Central Palace, very, very cool. Um, yeah. It's a stronghold, right? It's like a... It's not... It wouldn't... Like, the, the, way, the way that they say that it would work doesn't... It wouldn't help as much as... I mean, I don't once know. You're, once you're in the city, once you're, like, yes, the archers on the upper levels could shoot at the rooftops of the lower levels, but once you're in those buildings, the archers on the rooftops can't really do that much because sure. you can use the buildings as cover. Yeah, so, but like, they mostly get attacked by, like, pirates, so it's like... Oh, 100%. Yeah. Just the, the, the excuse of, like, well, our archers would be able to get them. I'm like, kind of. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Kind of, yeah. You're, once once you're fighting enough. in the city... If your enemy is in the city, you're, 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 it's bad. Well, that's what the soldiers are for. Yeah. If, you, <laughs> what, what, if the enemy penetrates the wall, things are already bad. Oopsie. You know what I mean? Arizu, thank you so much for 10 gifted memberships. Yeah. Uh, Hell yeah. Let's go. So much green in chat. Arizu, thank you so much. Thank that's very you. sweet of you. Claris Polaris got a membership. Wow. You need to turn that off. I, I don't. We've I, talked yeah. about it for so long. I don't even know like how, but once yeah. a month you get a membership in this. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I will. I will work on that. <laughs> you don't need a membership to our channel. I know. Uh, so Jode is uh, Jode is Brahm's um, former lover. Um, they spent many a night cuddling in the wilderness. Sure. Just, yeah. Yeah. You know. Doing a little, doing a little sloppy toppy back and forth, and that's a new one. You've never heard sloppy toppy before? No, yeah, never. never. You need to go on the internet more. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, I am always on the internet. And so Jode, um, Jode, Jode and Brom have like a little private meeting moment in the castle, uh, which Aragorn, Aragorn, Aragon, uh, over here. spies on for the first time. He's a little bit of magic. He's been he's been learning some magic. He can float pebbles and he can. Um, hear really good. Uh, yeah. I don't really understand how this works, but... You say a magic word, and it lets you do a thing. James Ross, thank you for James Ross, thank membership. you for giving a memo. <laughs> One of my favorite things about this series, actually, is mm -hmm. how the magic system works. 
that it is set up with like you can do things as long as like you have the energy to dedicate to this task, right? Things further away mm -hmm. take more energy. Things that are larger take more energy. Like this, like the system of like give and take. To make up for Clarissa's. Thank you, James Ross. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I, I actually, I, I really like, I think that it's interesting. I don't love when like magic doesn't have any limitations, right? When you just throw spells. I love the limitations on it. Yeah. yeah. I think one of the weird ways that magic is set up in this book um, and I like the magic system a lot, mm -hmm. but the one weird thing about it is that it's like, it would take you as much energy as doing it would take you, is like the idea of it, right? Yeah, roughly. Which is very strange to me because I can't, I don't know like how much energy it would take to hear farther away. And so if that's the limitation on spells, there's a lot of spells that I'm like, I don't, I you don't, don't know how much energy it's going to take until you cast it. Yes, but also I don't know I don't know how that takes energy. Well, I mean it doesn't tire him out that much. I'm assuming it's the energy of like walking that distance and listening, but I don't know. <laughs> but, so I, I I love the idea that somewhere like in the like spirit realm of this world, there are just like magic accountants mm -hmm. who are like arguing. That would actually be a funny short film. Um it's like they're because they're they it's like a table and it's like Aragon's table of spirits. And they're sitting around with calculators. Like, he, like, starts saying the words. And they have to very quickly, like, do the math on how much energy that action would take. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Colonel Sanders, welcome back to the nerd table. The magic system here feels like David Edding's Will in the Word system. The Bulgariad mm. and the Mandalorian series of books. Very cool. The Mandalorian. I, yeah, I didn't know. I don't know, I don't know what, I I didn't know David Edding wrote about Mandalorians. <laughs> um, uh, the Shadowling thank says. Thank you for being a member. The extra energy to propel sound waves to him. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm sure, I don't know. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's a cool system. Oh, I, and and it, I, I do as well. There's just, yeah. there's some things that they do that I'm like, you're like, how? Sure. Like, like I don't know. Magic. Like, how much energy would it take to scry? What, when, right? when he's, like, breaking the rocks, right? When he's collapsing the tunnels. Sure. I can figure out, like, he's like, oh, it, would, it takes as much energy as it would take me to break this rock in my hand. And I'm like, okay, I can, I understand the, like, limitations on that. Yeah. I don't understand the limitations on scrying because it doesn't seem like that's using magic to do something that you can do. Yeah. It's doing something that isn't doable. Yeah. So how, how much energy does which, it take? Which is why, you, like, you have people experimenting and doing things that well, or, like, they're, like, certain things that you can't do. We don't do. It's yeah, impossible. Yeah, yeah. Like, somebody probably, like, had to, ha had, someone had to figure it out. Right? I just, I, I, I love the idea that they're, like, that somebody has to do that math for him. In the moment, yeah. And yeah, 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 yeah. Out. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get we'll talk about the magic system more because there's a lot of stuff that's not introduced in book one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll get to it. But uh, I have to pee really quick, so bye. All right, bye. Uh, so they come up with a plan. Um, to, to, uh, like they they kind of say that they have a plan to steal the information, but it's not really. They just go there. Like the plan is the plan. The the limit of the plan is, uh, Aragon left something, and we have to go get it. Um, I don't want to talk about Angela without Clarus and Raffin, so I'm just going to talk about this part. The, the, their plan is just, we're going to go do it. And then they go do it. Um, this comes after Aragon reveals that he's illiterate, uh, and he learns to read in a week. Pretty impressive. Um, uh, Shadowling says, also, the better you are with the language, the less energy, or is it more efficient? No, right? Because you can be, you can use fewer words... And be more efficient, right? You can you can say only the word for water, and if you can like imagine the way that you get there with water, really strong, then you can just make it happen with just that word. So you don't need you you don't actually need to be better with the language. You need to be have a better imagination, right? And Bryce says, so glad we didn't ditch the Claris peeing segment when we switched days. Yeah, sorry. It's, so it's, I still pee every day. A couple of important things happen here. Um, we get a really cool world building thing, which is that Jode's wife um, is like miserable because he is trying to help the Varden uh, and it is fucking up her life. She wants to live a rich life. Uh, Brom gets a couple of digs in at her over at, over dinner and it's very funny. Uh, Aragon learns to read. Yeah, yeah. He becomes literate in a week, which is impressive. And he meets Angela. And he meets Solemn Bomb. 
Solembam. Solembam, yes. Because <laughs> jellicles can and jellicles do. Jellicle cats for jellicle cats. Has anyone done a Solembam like addition to Cats the Musical? I doubt it. For Watt Idol, that'll be my addition next year. The thing is, he looks They're like, like Rumtum Tugger because he's got the like. <laughs> the Rumtum Tugger is a curious cat. <laughs> What's up, Magic? Um... <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we meet Angela, and we get <laughs> we get our we get the kind of prophecy that I like. Mm-hmm. Which is fun. I'm glad that you like it. Yeah. Um, because yeah. it doesn't it doesn't force our characters into any ch- decision. Yeah. It's also the first time that Aragon like communicates with something else. It's not Sephira through this like mental link because he tries mm, to like yeah. be like. Friend and Salambam is like, you don't have to fucking do that, you know. <laughs> I get it, and he's like, oh my god, because <laughs> he thinks he's just a cat. Um, but he mm-hmm. is a were cat. Very cool. More on that later. Um, yeah. Angela shows up, and Angela is like, wow, you seem cool. Would you like me to read your fortune? <laughs> yeah, she, she. It is the worst fortune ever. <laughs> yeah. Like, someone's gonna die. Okay. Uh, you're gonna be in love. You're gonna have a great romance. Yes. Kind epic. of. Epic. Epic. We'll get to well, that no. later. Well, no, she doesn't say a well, great romance. She says an epic romance that like is of noble birth. I cannot see if it will end for good or bad. Which kind? Yeah. It's fine. We'll get to there. Um, that's later stuff. Later stuff. Um, there's gonna be a betrayal. Uh, gonna be a death. Um, the you're betrayal's gonna, coming from family. Yep. Yeah, you're gonna leave Alagazia forever. And he's like, wait, where, what? Where the fuck am I going to go? It's so frustrating. This version of Book Club is frustrating for me. Mm-hmm. Because in Wheel of Time, this would have been fun to talk about. To predict, I know. And for us, it's like, oh, I know what all of the, I know when all of these things happen. Yeah. Right? I know, I know who betrays Aragon. I know how he does it and I know when. Um, yeah. And so it is interesting because we can't like speculate. And for the first time readers coming through this journey with us, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil for them. No, and no, so, which is why we're, yeah, not spoiling. We'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. It's fine. <laughs> um, and Solombaum also gives his own information. Uh, when you need a weapon, look under the roots of the Manoa tree, and when your power doesn't seem like it's enough, you speak your name to uh, open uh, the... You go to the Rock of Kuthian to speak your name and open the Vault of Souls. And Aragorn's like, I don't know what the fuck any of that means. I do. I do too. <laughs> I don't. I actually don't remember fine. either of those events. What? Yeah, I don't. I, I I remember. I remember one thing about the vault. Like I re, I remember them like happening. Sure, sure, sure. It's fine. We'll get to that. Like the details of them, I I couldn't like describe to you what happens in either Mel- of those moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that they happen. Yeah. Right. Like, and I remember them being important, but like, I guys, I really don't remember anything past this book. Which is why I, I like I'm I I'm I like it. I'm excited to yeah. like, talk it through with you because I, I here here's something fun. I remember everything about Murtag in the next book. And then I do not remember Murtag being in the last two books. And I know that he, like, I know he is. Like, I he remember exists. he around. exists. <laughs> but, like, I've read these books. Literally not one. I couldn't tell you one thing Murtag does outside of the two things that I know he does in the next book. And, like, it's so funny to me. Really? Completely. Like, I, I couldn't describe the end of the series to you at all. Other than, like, the big Aragon thing. Um. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Cool. I love this for us. This is very exciting for me. Matrix um, says, I know what they all mean now. I have 10% of inheritance left to read. Matrix is like on it for book club. Matrix was like, it. I am ready. Appreciate you. Uh, so they, 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 uh, Solemn Bum is really cute, um, but yeah. would uh, kill me because I'm allergic to cats. <laughs> and Aragon leaves very confused, but also um, being like, oh, that was interesting. I am not going to tell anybody about it. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, he tells Safira, and they're kind of like, eh, you know what, that doesn't, that seems like a thing for me. Oh, and Angela's like, oh, uh, I only ever did the knuckle bones for two other people. One was your mom, by the way. <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, God. Well, maybe his mom. It's the same name. He's not sure. Same name. But he's like, I've never heard anyone else with that name before. I just kind of wish uh, he had been like, hey, Brom, I met this witch, Angela, and Brom could have been like, fucking Angela's here, fuck. <laughs> yeah. I know, I kind of wish... Does she know I'm here? kind of wish we had that moment, uh, for sure. But, yeah, they're like, all right, teach Aragon to read. And then they break into the um, records or whatever it is. <laughs> and they try to find the records of the Seether Royal. Um, and they're there, they're reading or whatever, and Solomon shows up and is like, so uh, what if I told you there's uh, some soldiers that are going to come and look for you? <laughs> and Aragon's like, uh... 
okay, thanks, I guess. <laughs> oh, he, he shows up as a little boy as Colonel well. Colonel Sanders is like, spoiler Teddy, I thought Murtag died. What all I just said is that he's, I remember him doing two things in the next book and then I don't remember him being in the next two books. How is that a spoiler? <laughs> I don't know. He lives at, he's alive in the final scene of this book, so he's in the next book. Yeah. And then I don't remember it. How, how could I possibly be spoiling you by saying I don't know what he does in any of this shit? What is the spoiler there? I, I have don't know. no fucking clue what happens. <laughs> there is a character called Murtag. I genuinely cool can't dude. remember. <laughs> it's fine. We'll get there. Uh, we'll get there. Spoilers. We'll get there. I, I, I thought the character just ceased to exist after book one. Guys, he's in book two. I promise. He's he's in book two. He dies at the end of book one? Colonel Sanders. No, he doesn't. He does not. No, he doesn't. He's sitting on the bed with Aragon yeah. at the end of the fucking book. Aragon gets his back cut open, and then Murtag is there sitting with him when Aragon wakes up. One, th five lines up from the bottom of the book. Murtag laughed harshly. Yes, now you're just like me. Yeah. That's literally like... That. He makes a joke about his scar. Unless Murtag laughs himself to death. Colonel Sanders, the fight cleanup on is the bed. in book two. That is book two. You are ahead of yourself. Fight cleanup? I have no idea what you're talking about. The, this book ends with... I Wait. Huh? Oh, I thought there was a time jump into book two. No. No, book oh, two shit. starts almost immediately. This book ends with Murtag laughing har harshly <laughs> on a bed. Yeah. As Aragon um, talks about how he's going to come... He's gonna, yes. He says, I will come. I will come. I which will is come. The, the, the spiciest ending to a book I've ever read. But yeah. <laughs> no, Murtag is alive. We and haven't read Akatar yet. We so. will We will talk about Murtag next week. Don't you worry. Ma um, Matrix says, hard to spoil when you have the mind of a goldfish. I read these books 20 years. Guys, it's been almost 20 years since I read Aragon. Okay? It's funny because I have a terrible memory, but I don't know. This book, it's... it's You've read it's, it like 30 times, though. Yes. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. Um... So Solomon shows up, is like, hey, the guards are coming. They peace out. They realize they get the information they need. They're like, it's uh, one of two places. <laughs> what? <laughs> this scene is so funny. They break in, and then yeah. the guards show up to check on them, and they're like clearly outside of the records room, and the so, guard goes and is like, oh, the door's locked. Well, I guess you guys can go. He does want to have to do the paperwork. What? It's like when cops don't give you a ticket, because they don't want to have to fucking deal with it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I just thought it was... It, he's so not. He's like, ah, oh, yeah, we'll walk you guys out. Just like, don't fuck around. Yeah. And they're like, okay. And then they just leave. And you're yeah. like, okay, cool. Yeah, 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 that worked. Yeah, I do. Uh, I, yeah, I do love that for them. Um, but they get the information they need. They're like, okay, well, it's either one of two places. Drasleon is the most likely one, so let's just go there. And they're like, oh yes, Hellgrind. Mm. And then they they leave. Yeah. That, that, that's pretty. The whole much time, Sephira's been sitting on a cliff. Yeah, poor Eaton, Sophia is just like chilling. outside the the city, just like all right. Yeah, and I, well, I we don't talk about it. We haven't talked about it much, but I actually think that Aragon and Sophia's relationship grows really well in this book. Mm -hmm. Like when they do finally start saying like "I love you," it is it it feels very earned and it feels very genuine. Yeah, and I think they do a really good job mm -hmm. of um um. I, I think they do a really good job with that. Yeah, I I, uh, I agree. The time that they spend together is beautiful yeah um and you know like Sophia's frustration at ha being kind of left out of things being so far away and, and not able to 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 help um for for a lot of things right um she, like she's kind of she's an outcast and she has to hide and she's like I'm a fucking dragon i don't want to hide like what is this bullshit right we're about halfway through the book which is a good time to tell you this podcast is brought to you by misty mountain gaming hell yeah misty mountain gaming is a dice company uh that makes dice and accoutrement for all your tabletop rpg needs they, they got some cool shit they got dice they got notebooks they got bags they, they got, got minis mugs. you can get minis there minis uh, so much DMV. we uh we oh should we show off the dice that we got will you run and grab them right now yeah they're right there they're oh literally my god what kicking me out just want to see that booty um, D and D is uh, a game that we play. Uh, if you come back on November twenty fifth, uh, we will be doing Roleplay Relay two, a charity stream for Cap for Kids. Um, that is a charity that supports the families of children whose uh, kids are suffering from pediatric cancer. Uh, Missy Mountain Gaming is going to be a sponsor of that stream. We're very grateful for uh, their uh, partnership. If you use code NerdyNightly15 on their website, you can get 15% off your order. Uh, you can't order these as far as we know. Um, but uh, these are sterling silver. 
Uh, dice. Hollow dice. Wait, 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 wait. They are hollow dice wait, wait. made from sterling silver. ASMR. Uh, this was a con exclusive at New York Comic Con that we got. Yeah. Uh, they are by far the most expensive dice we own. Don't worry about it. Uh, and we want to thank our partners at uh, Missy Mountain Gaming for this. Uh, it was incredibly kind of them. Um, they make very cool dice uh, in a variety of sets. Um, this set is gorgeous. They're hollow dice. Make the jingle jangle noise. And uh, you should use code NerdNet15 to get yourself some D&D dice rocks. Um, some Mac shiny, uh, don't eat them, please, uh, tasty little candy treats. Um, so, yeah, we're so grateful for uh, Missy Mountain Gaming for partnering with us for this show. Mm -hmm. uh, we're so thankful for them for sponsoring, uh, being the first of our uh, three sponsors uh, for, um, three sponsors so far, for Roleplay Relay 2. Uh, we're very excited uh, and we're grateful to them not only for making such great products, but also for helping us as we head towards this uh, charitable moment we're doing at the end of the year. Yeah, we're so excited, guys. Um, full cast announcement is tomorrow. That's right. Make sure you're on Twitter. Make sure you're on Instagram. Like you, We will be announcing the cast tomorrow. We got lots of really cool people involved in this. So. It's, it's more people than Relay 1. It's only one yeah. day, but there will be more people involved. More people. Get hyped. Roleplay Relay 2, November 25th. Sponsored by MissyMountainGaming.com. Hell yeah. All right, let's get back to the books. Uh, they uh, We get another little travel sequence. Yeah. They, um, they head to over to the Helgrind. The Dras Leona. Dras Leona. Where there's a weird fucking cult religion thing where you chop <laughs> off your limbs. I, I completely forgot about this. I was like... Yeah, it's it's fucked up. It's some fucked up shit. Um, um, <laughs> they're there because the Razak are there. And uh, they... Get caught really fast and then they leave. Yeah, yeah. For it some reason, I remember long. this being where Arya was. In Dress the Own? Yeah, I, there, oh. there's a whole. Because I was like, oh, when do they meet Murtag? Because <laughs> I read the book, I'm like, don't they meet Murtag before they get here? I was very confused. Yeah, also, y'all, very funny. We were talking about the book going into it, and I was like, yeah, because Braum dies in book two. No, no, not even a little bit. Um, but so anyway, it doesn't matter. He does so, like halfway through this book. So we we get here. I, I was this. I was very confused this whole time because I thought, and I think it might be the movie. I think that they're like pa the palace thing or the like weird creepy cliff, um, where Arya is being held. Um, well, she's being held in the dungeon, but I think that Dress Leona and no, but in the movie it's like on like a mountain. And it's like this like dark, creepy mountain. And so oh. when they started to describe the spires, I was like, oh, right, this is where the like dark, creepy mountain. You thought she was in Hellgrind. Right. Okay, yeah. From I, the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't yeah. remember. And so I, this whole time I was like, oh, what's happening? And then they just run away from it. And I was like, completely forgot about yeah. this. Yeah, they run away. But we get and, a great uh, the action sequence. This might be my favorite. Because we'll get to the final battle. Uh-huh. It was a bit rushed for me. Sure. And so this might be my favorite action sequence in this book, is the, like, fleeing through Hellgrind. I think that the way that it functions and the the absolute, like, the way in which Braum and Aragon are just absolutely overpowered here and have to just use their wits to flee and are, like, fucked up because of it. Yeah. Um, and, and the magic moment that is not an attack, but it's just brushing the spears aside and holding the door for a second. Yeah. Is like a really smart use of, hey, in our magic system, you can only do kind of what you can already do, what you could physically do with your body, right? Mm -hmm. But at a distance. And so having Aragon not blow the doors open, but just like stop them for a second and not kill those, uh, Brom not kill those guys, but just kind of like throw them to the side. Well, it's a mistake that Aragon learned before when he tried to throw those Urgles, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You know, like, and Brom is like, I had to fucking clean up your mess. Like, Aragon like fucks up and learns from it. Yeah, and I, I, I just thought this, this action sequence is really well described and I felt like I was in the middle of it the whole time in a way that I thought was really strong. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I like the fleet from Hellgrind. I, it's interesting because narratively, like, not a lot happens here. It's just kind of like a failure that our characters make. Yeah. And because of that, I, I kind of loved it because yeah, it sets up right. like they've got so far to go. Yeah. And then they lose Brahma immediately. Yeah. They yeah. get fucked up because the Razak are powerful and scary, and they yeah they they fuck them up. They're like um they've got. Safira, like, uh, they, they're, like, threatening to kill Aragon, right? Um, and then, uh... Well, the, so, so what happens is that they roll, 
so poorly on their perception checks yes. on their watch. Yes. Like <laughs> the Razak are too sneaky. Aragon. They got past. And the Urkels right. are. Yeah. Aragon, Braum, and Safira are the worst at keeping watch I've ever seen in any fantasy thing ever. They everybody, even the Varden. All of our good guys are mm. so bad at knowing when the enemy is coming for them. It's shocking, frankly. I don't know. It's one of those things that I actually find more realistic because, like, I was... A thousand percent, yes. Right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always am like, oh, in fantasy series, every everyone knows when everyone's coming up because their spies and information are perfect. And because Legolas can see for, like, six leagues. Yeah, yeah, He has exactly. magic elf eyes. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. Middle Earth is maybe flat. <laughs> It's complicated. Um, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Middle Earth used to be flat and now isn't. So how rounded it is, we don't really know. But Hilarious. Yeah. I well, love part that. of the reason we can only see so far is because of the curvature of the Earth, right? Yeah. But in Middle Earth, the curvature is less because it used to be a flat Earth, which is hilarious. Uh, yeah, yeah um, it is. God, I love Lord of the Rings lore. Uh, <laughs> so weird. And so so we get we get what I think is actually like a really great like threatening scene where the Razak just kind of come in and fuck them up. Yeah. Aragon wakes up and like they're putting a muzzle on Saphira, which means that they had that ready, which is insane because like Well they knew that she hatched. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They just were like And they're like around. professional like egg breakers, you know, like Which which is weird. So they <laughs> this is something that I didn't understand. They set up that the Razak are dragon hunters. Right? Well they are enemies of the dragons. No, no, yes. no, no. They say that the Razak are Galbatorix's dragon hunting people. Like that's the, the book sets says that about them. Well, there's no other dragon, so Th I, that is exactly what I'm getting to. I don't they're, know why. They're, none they're of like the other his, dragons have hatched. They're his personal like uh, it's a assistant spy. Like yes, but the book just explicitly is like these are his dragon people. The, these people deal with his dragon problems. But there are no other dragon... Like, this is the yeah. first time there's been a dragon problem. Yeah. That they could handle. The why they've got a muzzle prepared. <laughs> I just... I, yeah. I was like, sure. Okay, sure. Yeah. And then suddenly, arrows fly from the darkness because, mm -hmm. like you said, nobody has any perception skills, including the Razak. Um, 100%. And they go, pew, pew. Uh, Murtag shows up and saves the day, but not before one of the Razak throws a knife at Aragon and Brahm is like, not on my watch, and throws himself in front yeah. of that Yeah. Just gets him right through the ribs. Yeah. It's uh, it's very sad. It's very sad. Ron doesn't die right away. Um, <laughs> because Murtag saves them. Yes. Murtag saves them. I love that Aragorn wakes up and he's like, Sephira, you didn't uh, build that fire, did you? And she's like, no. <laughs> then who did? It's the hot handsome man with the rich weapons and the money and the, the, yes. the horn. It's the hot handsome is man. It's not relevant. But yeah. it's like lingered on. He's hot. The it, book yeah. makes such a big deal about the horn. Is he talking about his penis? Because it's no. kind of shaped. <laughs> no, no, no. I think that... Uh, I mean, it's something you blow, right? No, I honestly think that Not Aragorn and Maritai, obviously. <laughs> I think that Paolini loved Lord of the Rings and was like, well, um... Uh, oh my god. Aragorn, or Boromir has Boromir a horn. Boromir has a horn, so... Uh, oh, is Maritai the Boromir of this series? That's, inter that's an interesting way to think about it. He, he is flawed. He comes in at the same time. Does it? I mean, I like, guess like halfway it, through. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. He joins the party. He has to earn some respect, but like, yeah. Yeah, sure. He's, he's the Boromir of our fellowship. Yeah. I don't know how, like, how many people is the fellowship And this, according to Colonel Sanders, spoilers. he's dead at the end of book one. So like. <laughs> no, he is very much alive at the end of this book. Which Boromir um, isn't. Don't worry about it. In the books of Lord of the Rings, but is in the movie. So does that mean then that Brom is Boromir? <laughs> no, Brom is Gandalf. Yeah. Brom is Gandalf. Because he but comes back as Brom smart. the White later on. No, he does When does. Brom gets revived. Sorry, spoilers. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. If, honestly, mm -hmm. my memory of these books is so bad that that could happen, and I would go, can't believe I forgot that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I honestly, yeah, I don't remember the horn either. It, I. Oh, no, I believe you. I just, like, never, like, noticed it. <laughs> it is, like... And maybe I'm drawing way too much attention to this fucking horn. Mm -hmm. But, like, I... It's in the chapter... I think it's just in the chapter. It's called Murtag. Eric, Eric brings up a super cool point, which is something that I actually do love about the magic system, is it leaves so much room for creativity and interpretation. Like, I I was, like, thinking about it I was, as I was reading it. I was like, if I was, like, a warrior in this series and could use magic, like... What if, what if, what if I just, like, the enemies in front of me, I just nicked everybody's Achilles, 
and they fell over. Like, you can't, like, walk with, here's, without without that. Here's why it stands out to me, right? Uh-huh. So this is, how er- this is how Murtag is introduced. The stranger, dressed in battered clothes, exuded a calm, assured air. Mm-hmm. In his hands was a bow. At his side was a long hand and a half sword. Neither of those things get any description at all. They're just so, like, functional and, like, yeah. it, it is a bow and a hand and a half sword. Yeah. A white horn bound with silver fittings lay in his lap. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, the horn, ha- the the bow and the hand and a half sword are just, like, individual words in a sentence. Mm-hmm. And then the this horn gets a whole fucking description because it is a white horn bound with silver fittings. Yeah, true. It is the only thing in the sentence that gets, like, adjectives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is not important at all later on. He never blows this horn. Yeah. And so it is just really, like, it is this wild, like... I mean, it gets a, like, descriptor. It's not... But I, it is I didn't the feel like only it thing in the sentence that gets adjectives. I hear you. Look, I and hear And it gets you. two of them. I hear you. Right? <laughs> a white horn bound with silver fittings lay in his lap, yeah. which is such a, like, intimate, like, place for his cock to be. His horn to be. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know where else your cock would be, And but... it's just... It's so funny to me that, like, this... I, I was like, oh, this horn must be really important in this book, and it is no. not mentioned again. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah. So, uh, Ram gets stabbed and uh, it, it and and slowly dies over the course it's of so sad. the next like day. It is tragic. It like is so Aragon sad. is like, I can't heal that. He's yeah. like, that is beyond. He 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 heals the skin over top, obviously, so that Brom just doesn't like bleed up. Yeah, yeah. Um, but which might have been better. Than just like slowly dying down. a little bit faster. No, because like... Brom has this moment of like lucidity where he he he's like get my whiskey or wine or whatever it is, and he like washes his palm with it, which I don't understand. That must be some kind of magic thing. But uh, what, what do you mean? Brom reveals a get away nausea on his palm. He has makeup on it, and he washes it off. Why can't you just use water? Because they only have their wine skins on them. It might not have been wine. It was just a wine skin that he uses to. No, it says wine. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Doesn't matter. He's got a silvery palm because Brom. Oh, maybe the alcohol was a breaks rider. down the makeup because it's an oil-based makeup, and so you need to use alcohol to like. You know what? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. That's why you use like alcohol wipes to like get makeup off your face. I guess. I always thought it was a magic spell that Brom put on that like only like uh, like wine will reveal it. I don't. I don't know. Why? Why would? <laughs> what 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 words in the ancient language would you use to have wine break but, your magic? <laughs> it could be anything. It could be a very long spell. <laughs> it's fine. Um, but yeah, Brom was a writer whose dragon's name was Sephira. How fitting. Um, um, and, and we uh, get his final moments, which yeah. um, I, I did highlight and took a picture of. That is all I can give you. Use them in great need. He told him some words that we don't get to know yet. Yeah. Bromley, Brom blindly turned his eyes to the ceiling, and now he murmured, for the greatest adventure of all. And he dies. Yeah. So they make him a little tomb, and Sphere touches it with her boop. She boops it. Her boop. She boops it, and it turns into diamond where you can see him through it. Um, and there's a little thing at the bottom that says, here lies Brom. He was like a father to me. My name's Aragon. You killed my father, prepare to die? What is this? No, it's it's beautiful. It's sweet. It's, sweet. No, no, it's a great little tomb. Sub- uh, s- subscription? That's the wrong word. Description? Inscription. Oh, there's pictures in here? Yes. Whoa! Yeah, do you guys want to see some concept guys, art for this? The... This is sick. Razak? There we go. The collector's edition is way better than mine. Why didn't I read that? Um, because I was reading this one. That's creepy as fuck. Oh, yeah. The, the Razak are like. Scary as all hell. I didn't know there were pictures. Guys, I love bics with picture. Bics, big, 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 pictures. So this is the moment oh that... Oh my god. Um, Arya's hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you guys can see that super I well. I need to go through those. Um, But uh, that's Arya riding on uh, Sephira and breaking Isidar Mithrim. Um, which, like... <laughs> very tragic. Uh, but Brahm's death inspires Aragon. Uh, he becomes hard. Um... That's, that's not Jeremy Irons. That's what Brom looks like, apparently. That's not Jeremy Irons. <laughs> uh, and we get we get uh, a couple pages later. Um, we uh, we get this moment where Brom, where Aragorn finally, he, you know, he's never really used the sword up now. Now he's used his bow and he's used his magic. Mm-hmm. But he he puts Zarok on his uh, hip, mm-hmm. uh, and he wears it for the first time. Wow, that's beautiful. I know, right? Yeah. Sorry, I'm just showing off the art. To keep. Oh, I would hang that in the house. Right. Um. And he, he has this internal moment where he says, from this moment on, I'll live by the sword. 
Let the whole world see what I am. I have no fear. Well, that's not true. I am a rider now, fully and completely. And, you know, I, I think that... Uh, I think that the way Paulini uses the mentor death moment mm -hmm. from the hero's journey uh, to tell the story about Aragon finding himself mm -hmm. um, in his loneliness. Obviously, Murtag's there, but they don't trust each other yet. I think it does a really, I think he does a really good job with it. The, the scene is emotional. It's sad. Aragon gets pretty devastated about it. And, yeah. and the way that he constructs the narrative, Aragorn has a legitimate amount of time to grieve Brom. Yeah. And kind of, like, reconcile his feelings in a way that some series just kind of move on. And so the death feels like it doesn't mean as much. Yeah. Because the characters just have to move on. Narratively, there's no room for them to slow down. Yeah. And this book is like, and then they travel for four months. <laughs> the, then they ride for fucking ever to Gilead. Um, not to, not Gilead. Gilead is... Handmaid's Tale. Um, oh, is it? I didn't know. Yeah, Gilead I... is what America is called in The Handmaid's Tale. When, oh. when the, like, white supremacist rapist people take over, they call it Gilead. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, I did not, uh, I did not know that. And so they go to Gilead. Where's... According to the, it's here. That's nope, fourth forward. language. It's right, it's alphabetical. No, because that's the ancient language. Here, no, no, here, here, here. Pronunciation. Oh, Gilead. Gilead, yes, sure. Gilead. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, uh, I, I really... Well, Aragon has broken ribs, so they can't travel that fast, which is... Oh, yeah, they're traveling the, slowly, yeah. The, the time to pass, yeah. Oh, there's definitely a reason. Um, I just, uh... Yeah, I, I, I really, I, I, I loved the, uh, Brahm's death into Aragon's grief, into Aragon being like, I'm a writer, I'm going to yeah. do this thing. And it, we haven't really talked about much, but there's a there is a thread underneath the whole book um, of Brahm and uh, later Safira kind of being like, hey, you're going to have to make a choice. And I Brahm yeah. is saying, I don't want to choose for you. But yeah, you're Brahm going to is... choose between the Empire of the Varden or running away. Yeah, Brahm tries to shelter him from that choice for as long as possible. You don't get to just live. You don't get to just be calm. That yeah. None of those are options for you anymore. You are either going to be working for Gabatorix, going to be working for, with the Varden, maybe not for, but with. Yeah, yeah. Or you're going to be fleeing for the rest of your life. Yeah. And I, the, this is the moment where I think, like, even though I don't think Aragon knows yet that he's going to choose the Varden, this is the moment where he chooses the Varden. Yeah, yeah. I think that that's fair. Um, yeah, we get this, like... Uh, this, this time that passes that also allows Aragon to build a relationship with Murtag. Bro time. Uh, yeah. They find that they're, like, very similar, that they're perfectly matched at sword fighting uh, once Aragon's ribs are healed. Um, but yeah, yeah Brahm's he, training really got him there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're, like, we tire at the same rate. Like, none of us can get the one up on one another. Like, they're, like... Murtag does not reveal much about himself, but he does... Uh, protect his mind real well. Aragorn's yes. like, I don't understand. I can't get in there. That's a steel trap. Yeah, no, no. You can't can't touch his brain. And so they flee all the way to Gilead, uh, where they're trying to meet Dormnand. And... I, why are you laughing? That's the guy's fucking name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a bully. I always thought it was funny, but that's... Dorm, Dormammu. Uh, they've come to bargain. Yeah, he and meets with Dormammu. <laughs> they, uh, they get there, and they get attacked kind of immediately. Aragorn gets taken. And he wakes up in a cell. Yeah, they get fucked up. He looks out the door to his window. Guess who's there? The woman that he's been dreaming about. Who's the woman he's been dreaming about? Fill, the, fill them in on that. That is Arya. Uh, she is, um, nope. Uh, she's Arya. She was, I was going to just go into her whole backstory. And that is spoilers. You're really bad at this. I know, I know, I know. Um, Arya is the person who. The redhead. In, yeah, not a redhead. Sorry. Uh, what? No, she's a redhead in the movie, and it's so weird. She's like this strawberry blonde in the movie. Oh, and yeah. And she's yeah. described as having like black, silky, straight And she hair. kind of like, can't be a redhead because isn't that like what makes shades shades? No, no. Isn't red? Yeah, red hair is no, like the like. Katrina the... has ginger hair. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no. The, the the shade looks fucked up because, you know, he's shade. a shade. Um, but no, being ginger doesn't mean you're a shade. Okay, um, so throughout the book, uh, Aragon has been dreaming about a woman. Yeah. Even though you can't scry on someone you've never met before. Yeah. Obviously, when she sent the egg to him, there's like some kind of thing connecting them, right? It seems pretty obvious that and Brom isn't like, ah, maybe that's it. What? Uh, yeah, so Arya is the person who uh, sent the egg in the prologue. 
I'm, we're not, I can't, there's spoilers. Um, Is that not why they're connected? Is there something else? I don't remember. Guys, I... <laughs> No, here's the thing. It's not. This is a new said... reader podcast where a nerdy nightly sits here and it doesn't know no, what no. the fuck. No, no. Here's the thing. It's not said in this book, and so I'm like interested. The to, most to hear logical. Why you think that? Because the, the most logical connection between them is that she was carrying the egg for years. Okay. Back and forth. And, and so she's so, a connection with. And then she sends it to Aragon. He's the first person to touch it, hmm. while her magic is still lingering in the area. There's a reasonable. Okay. Okay. There I is see, a, I see why you there get there. There is a yeah. reasonable leap between she used long distance teleportation magic. Mm -hmm. He touched that magic and was given because he touched that magic at the time when he touched the magical thing, he has imprinted on her magic sure, and yeah. is able to like dream to her through her magic. I I completely see why you would make that connection. Absolutely. Maybe, apparently there's something else. We'll get to it later. Um but that's what we're going with for Or we one. won't. Who knows? Um, I don't know. You wouldn't have had such a weird reaction. You're bad with spoilers. No, I'm just, that, that is interesting that that's what, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, well, but like that, if, if that's what the book said, that's a totally reasonable explanation to yeah. me, given the magic system here. Yeah, right? for sure. We, we were in, we, I carried the egg that became your dragon mm -hmm. for years. We are tied together through the magic of that dragon egg. Yeah. Right. Enough of that dragon's magic and my magic kindled together in those years that I ran it around the country like a fucking messenger bag that we are inevitably tied together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I hear you. Um, yes, yeah, so they parade Arya past his cell and he's like, oh, wow, I recognize her. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the shade comes on by, first of all, Aragorn realizes he's being drugged. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. similar to Wheel of Time, Forker. there is a, yeah, there is a drug that suppresses magical ability and but, also makes but, you a little loopy. But like... It makes you forget the ancient language, which yeah. is such a specific weird thing. Like, I can understand if you would still be able to speak the ancient language but can't use magic. But the fact that he's like, oh, God, I forgot the words. But but it but speaks perfect English. It's not like he's sitting there like, uh, food, me hungry, Neanderthal brain. He's like, no, I can speak absolutely fine, but, God, I can't remember Spanish. To be Fair, he's like be, very sluggish. It would be like if Tylenol in the side effects was like you will not be able to speak Spanish while you take this drug, <laughs> and so they had to use Advil in Mexico or else nobody could communicate. Uh, that would be so weird. Uh, I, or, I, I or even more hilariously, if you like took Pepto Bismol uh -huh. and it's like you will it will solve your diarrhea, but you will forget Latin. And so, like, there are just these poor Latin majors taking their, like, SATs, taking their college courses, and they like, just have, have wild Mormon. diarrhea yeah, yeah, yeah. mid, like, SATs. Like, I can't take this. Can't fix it e for pluribus me. unum is just fucking gone for us. I, Ave Maria can't fucking remember it. And they, they have to choose between, <laughs> oh, my God, can you imagine being an opera singer? And you have to choose between having rampant diarrhea or being able to sing Ave Maria, but that you would, can't do both. That that would be very unfortunate. Wild. Uh, Michael Kioski, thank you for that super chat. Didn't read Aragon. I have to go full <laughs> and and Renegade? Renegade? Renegade in this playthrough. In this playthrough. Glad the book club is still going strong. Let's go, Michael Kioski! Hopefully, if, here's the thing. If you watch book club, hopefully you'll have a good enough idea of what happens in these books. <laughs> Eric says two beers in. I can't conjugate in German. <laughs> To be fair, I can't conjugate in German sober, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Aragon is like, oh, they're drugging me and stops eating, drinking, and. Uh, and Durza shows Durza up. Durza is like, hey, buddy. What's Hi, your... I'm the villain of this book. What's your name? And Aragon's like, my name's Aragon. And he's like, no, 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 not that one. You're like, actual name. Because we've which learned. Which is in the ancient language, which Aragon cannot remember because he is drugged with the drug that makes him not able to remember the ancient language. So how would he remember his ancient language name while he's taken the drug? This see, this is where I lose my mind over the specifics of things. Well and because Aragorn either, does speak the ancient language because he says do Sundaver Fro here and you're like, oh well if that's the ancient language, but you can't remember the words of the ancient language. This was I was thrown for a loop here. I was sitting there like I'm so confused about what is happening. Either he can't remember the ancient language or he can, but it can't be both. It's very strange. Yeah. And then the... And then, That's a... You gotta gloss over and it. And the shade is like, I don't have time right now. 
I have to go. We'll do this again when I have more time. And I was like, what the fuck is well, so no. important in your life right now? He realizes, he, he he thinks that Aragon hasn't been taking the drugs, that he's, like, too lucid. And, or, or, no, you know what it is? He's like, he just spoke words in the ancient language. He hasn't been taking his drugs properly. <laughs> oh, maybe. But then why, is, how's he going to get the... No, it doesn't make any sense whichever way you would, like, look the at it. The bad guy's plot, but... the, all of the bad guy's plots in this book are kind of nutso. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a little bit nutso. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Don't, 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 yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, Anshaman says, you are both bad people because you think Bahubali is just foolish movie, but you not do oh. not see how good the story of that movie is. Dude, uh, that reaction oh came out in February. Oh, my God. My guy. Can we move on? My guy that was eight months ago. You ruined how, oh, oh, God. Uh, we're bad people. It's not that good. I'm sorry. We're bad people. Go watch RRR. RRR is RRR, a better film. fantastic. Bahubali well is kind of a mess. Ten out um, ten. Yeah, RRR is great. Bahubali is also sexist as fuck. Yeah. Very misogynistic. Mm -hmm. um, but there was some cool action in it, so I'll give it that. So, yes. Yeah, so, so there's... This this scene, I was just like... The the shade comes in, is very confusing. I don't know what he's trying to get out of it. And then he Which leaves. And fair. I was like, okay, great. Which is fair. <laughs> it was the most like, meh, I'm the villain. And I need to be introduced so that when you fight me in the final battle, it matters. He but I can't said, actually do anything right now. He literally now. said he's like, I'm here to gloat, obviously. <laughs> Eric says, can you do drugs wrong? Yes. 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 If yes, you distribute you the mushrooms through the batter and then don't know how much of each brownie yes. has has each has the amount of Mushroom? mushrooms in it, yeah, you put shrooms in brownies. What? I've never heard of shroom brownies before. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. No, I know someone who got. I've only ever done weed brownies. Yeah, no, I know someone who got hospitalized because they put mushrooms in the batter and didn't like distribute it evenly throughout, and so she got like all the drugs in her piece of brownie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not a good time. Uh, <laughs> what? I didn't do it. I've done a lot of shrooms. I've shroomies. <laughs> never thought I would. Never baked them. No, I just eat the mushroom. Sure. I don't know. I, I taste like, I said, like shit. But... Didn't do it myself. Yeah. I don't know. But yes, you can do drugs wrong. That is absolutely fact. I've never heard of someone going to the hospital because of mushrooms before. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So the, the so there's a leaves. Um. He gloats for like two seconds and then he leaves. And it's like, I'll come back when I have more time. I have to go do something. I don't know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And then Aragon is like, I'm going to keep starving myself. I'm so thirsty. He hasn't had water in like 20 hours. And he's acting like he's in the middle of the fucking desert. Dude. He's, steal he's, your loins. Gird your loins a little bit here, buddy. Well, no, because he was knocked out. So there, do you know how many times I, I go he, full, like, days without water? And yes, I do drink coffee, but, like, you, days without water. No, you, you you can only go, like, I mean, three days. I mean, yeah, but I'm drinking a shit ton of coffee. Fair. You yeah. know what? Fair. Oh, <laughs> uh, that actually checks out. I was trying to make a joke about how much coffee I drink. No, that's great. At the foregoing some water. I always thought Aragon was knocked out for at least a day. Uh, official ACM says, wait, I thought nerdy and clerics were bad because of AOT. Why can't people get things straight? No, but then he wakes up and eats, right? The first, oh, he eats it first and drinks. And then realizes. So it hasn't been that long he, since he's. No, no, no. He takes a sip of water and then he's like, this smells funny. But that's the second pitcher. Oh, I thought that was the first one. No, he's already consumed a whole thing of food and drink at that point. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe so I it hasn't been that. that long since he's like Sure, consumed. sure, 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 sure. I get it. I'm also a little bitch. I'd be like, I'm so thirsty. Yeah, you also always forget to drink water. No. If you don't have that sippy cup with your straw filled with water, you do not drink it. I it like doesn't sippy happen. Cups, okay. All right. If you're here, like the video. Just throwing that out there. Like uh, that oh, smash the poll. Button. Yeah, yeah. There, I, I Sixty-four like percent have read it before. <laughs> Twenty percent of you fuckers have not read this series. I have not read the book we're talking about right now. Honestly, what are impressive. you getting out of this? Impressive. I would. I would actually love to know. <laughs> it must be so confusing. Um. Uh, so. So yeah. So Durza fucks off, and Aragon is like, "All right, I'm making up an escape plan." And so he doesn't eat or drink until he can remember the words of the ancient language. Yeah. So that he can break the lock. He wakes up and he's like, it is time. Uh, and he breaks out of the cell, which just so happens to be when uh, Safira and Murtag are also breaking him out. Because he contacts Safira and she's like, no, no, wait the, wait there. Murtag is on his way. We have a plan. And so Murtag comes in dressed as Gandalf the Grey. 
Which I think is hilarious. He's got like a big wig and beard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which like in this time period, what what is that beard made out of? Horse hair. Oh, he that took might, it might be a, the tail. Tornax tail hair. And, and he's, he's got the mane up top. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Aragon sees Tornak again and he's just this bald horse. <laughs> he's got no tail left. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, it's great. I love it. I love it. Um, and so, yeah, they, they they fight their way upstairs. They they actually rescue Arya. Yes. She is um, unconscious. Because he's like, there's an elf here. Yeah. And Murtag is like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> there's a what where? So they, they rescue her and they go upstairs and uh, Aragon endures a fight. Um, and we've been, and we've learned that, um, there's sorcerer battles in this world are insane because yes. you can't just use magic at each other for some reason. That is explained in later. Yeah. It, it is definitely explained if you're like, that's a loose, it is. Yeah. Uh, Zedrock says you do a great summary, kind of the cliff notes of the book. Plus I love listening to you two talk. Thank you. Thank you, Zedrock. Welcome back to the nerd table. Uh, yeah. So the idea is that you have to know someone, if you're fighting another sorcerer and you use magic against them, Mm -hmm. you will kill them. But in the time it takes you to do that, they will be able to get a spell off and kill you as well. Yeah. It's mutually assured destruction or... Which seems like you should just like do it from a... You should be a rogue. No, and so it is explained uh, why you do the mental battle first later on. Yeah, I just think that the way it's introduced doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. I think, like, yeah. if I was Aragon, I'd be like, Aragon, but what if I was just faster? Yeah, Aragon does not have all the information yet. Yeah, yeah, and Brom, I just feel like Brom doesn't do a good job of setting him up for that. Mm-hmm. Like, so it, it, it's the kind of, like, information that Brom does have the actual truth of, yeah. but doesn't reveal to Aragon. Kind of like magic in the first place, where he's yeah. like, oh, I'm so mad at you for using a thing that you didn't understand because yeah. you didn't know you could do it. Yeah. But I, I wish, I wish Brom set it up a little bit better because it is the kind of information that later on, and it might have been that Paulini realized that that didn't really work mm-hmm. and like had to like reintroduce it better later. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's fair. Sort of like what, um... Sort of like what uh, Wheel of Time Season 2 has to do with some of what they did in Wheel of Time Season 1. Right, You know right, what I mean? Right. Where they're like, yeah, eh, you gotta, don't worry about you, it. You gotta clean it up a yeah, bit. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. And so he fights Durza. He d- does Loses not win. spectacularly. Durza's like, wow, this is, you are trash. This is the best you, you got, 15-year-old? Terrible. He is 16 at this point. He is 16. You're right. He's he had secretly his birthday. had a birthday. Uh, <laughs> yes. Sephira didn't get him anything, which Rude. is like. I don't think dragons do like presents, but I don't know. I don't know. She could have got him like a deer or something. <laughs> sure. She's like, she's kind of like a cat. She could have like left it like on his left doorstep. Left a dead mouse for him. Be like, look, look how good I I don't did. know that, I don't know that Sphere could catch a mouse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know it what I mean? It would just be swallowed whole. Like, she would have to no... like, the, the amount of like earth she would have to chew with it to get that little mouse. Not worth it. Not worth it. Not worth it at all. Not worth it. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> so Sphere crashes through the ceiling while they're losing and like they fucking get out of there. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, she, like, literally rips through the stone. But don't and worry. And the soldier's like, ah! It's the only time in this book that Sephira crashes through the ceiling at the last second to save Aragon because he's losing to Durza. It is the only time that happens in this book. It's foreshadowing. I'm just saying, it is the only time that that exact specific thing happens in this novel. To be fair, it wasn't Sephira the second time. Yes, it was. No. Arya broke the star sapphire. Sure, because it's unbreakable and can't be broken by magic. But it is still the exact same beat of Aragon yes. is on the ground, Durs is about to kill him, yes. and then Sephira crashes through the ceiling at the last second. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. It is the exact beat twice. Yeah, yeah. There is one way to kill shades in this world. It is to have right Sephira the crash through the ceiling above you at the last second. Obviously. What um, else would happen? In the last moments before they flee, though, Murtag does get two arrows off. One to uh, Durza's, like, shoulder area. Yeah. And then one straight through the face, uh, which Rafe Judkins uh, then took for Wheel of Time Season 1 when he's, like, <laughs> and then bad CGI melts into that great actor's face. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it isn't broke, nerdy, don't fix it. You know what? Fair. Yeah, yeah. Can't don't argue with don't that. worry about it. It's a method, and it works. It's tried and true. It, it, two out of two times. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so they start flying away. And uh, a few days later... Uh, as they're they 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 start fleeing um, from Durza. 
Yes. They're being chased across the country. Arya is passed out. She's fully point, unconscious. Just so you know. Um, she kind of saw Aragorn break into her cell and then collapsed. Yeah. In which we find out is like a self-induced coma that she has put herself in. Yeah. And so they're yeah. fleeing and uh, they never meet Dormammu. And so they don't know where to go. Don. And so they come up with a plan to cross a sliver of the Hadarak Desert. Yes. Which is the big desert to the east. Yeah. I was um, like, can I show the map? To get to the Bayor Mountains and hope that uh, there's something there. Yeah, this is what the map looks like if you haven't seen it, for those of you who didn't read the book for a book club. Yeah, or just I'm, like Google it because you're <laughs> on the internet right now. I'm actually so sad. My very first copy of Aragon that I had actually had a tear out map. It was gorgeous. It was like this big and I lost it because I was sorry. a child. Um, but yeah, it was stunning. So they, the, 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 the next section of the book is really just six days of them fleeing. It's really good. I recommend you read it. I think it's handled really well. There's not a lot to talk about in it though. It is just like Aragon learns a really cool magic trick where he can pull instead of he tries to turn dirt into water which he can't do because it's too much energy and he almost dies uh, yes. but he can reach into the depths of the earth and pull the water up because it's like the same strength as pulling water up a well or something like that right yeah and so he's able to pull water up so he can cross the desert yes uh, and that is how they flee all the way to the Bayor mountains yes um they realize Arya is very hurt she's been tortured like crazy yes. Aragon does everything he can to heal her yeah. using his uh this is kind of the first time him and Saphira really connect to use their strength together yeah he's like I cannot do she is so beaten and bruised that he's like I can't heal this by myself Colonel Sanders says like Rand in Ruidian I f yeah kind of it's very different obviously um <laughs> yeah the events around things that happen because this is yeah. more of a like when we need water rather than in Ruidian where he like pulls the water up Forever. By accident, uh, yeah, that was. He creates a lake. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is more of a like practical survival need moment, yeah. but they're similar. He does not make a lake. <laughs> uh, and um, they they flee all the way to the Bear Mountains, mm -hmm. where they are attacked by extra large Urgles. Um, but not uh, oh, uh, Aragon takes way too fucking long. This pissed me off just a little bit. Oh, to contact Arya. Yeah. It takes him like five days later. He's like, oh, wait, I can connect to people's brains. Maybe I should try and do that to Arya. Well, to be fair, Brom was like, look, that's a last resort. Like, it's not the something you should... The girl's dying. Yeah, which is why he does it. He's like, okay, she hasn't woken up. Something has to be wrong. Right, he probably is like, she's so hurt and tortured. She's going to wake up in a minute. But he's like, okay, we've gotten to the point where we need to find the Varden. We're desperate. I'm like, just surprised Sephira wasn't go. immediately like, I'm going to boop her with my mind. Sephira doesn't seem to care about that as much. And I'm surprised she isn't like, hey, I got the map from... Yeah, because I... they don't cross the desert yet, right? They've kind of crossed the rest of the country. And then uh, they contact Arya via her mental link. And she almost kills Aragon. Yeah. Until he's like, I'm a rider and a friend. And she's like, mm, okay. <laughs> uh, so Arya does um, can communicate like images of how to get to the Varden. Mm -hmm. You have to knock three times on the mountain wall with a rock and say the magic password. Yes, uh, yes, yes. And then you get into the speakeasy. Look, the drinks are $25, but they are made by <laughs> a man in full clown makeup. So, spectacle, we just, I guess. We just spent the weekend in Vegas, if you can't tell. <laughs> uh, we saw Steve Aoki, uh, DJ, and Lil John came out, and they did To the Window to the Wall till the sweat so... dropped down my balls, and it was a special moment in my life. Yeah, it was pretty sick. It was pretty sick. You were very drunk. Uh, and it I was, was very little, funny. I, I was drunk. I was, I, I remember everything. Like, I wasn't like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You weren't like blackout, but you I were... I was having a good time. Guys, drunk Claris is a very fun person to be around. Oh, thanks. Very. <laughs> it doesn't happen often. Fun. Doesn't happen often, so it's a good time when it does. Um, but uh, yeah, we uh, they talk in their mind. She's like, "This is where you're gonna go," and Murtag is like, "I cannot go to the Varden." Yeah. And Aragon is like, "Okay, but why though?" And he's like, "So, the thing you have to understand." And then suddenly, Urgles show up. But these There's are like no ordinary Urgles. Yes. These are Calm. Uruk Urgles. Uruk Urgles. I stole that from Scarbrander, Mike. Uh, yeah, the 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 two towers motif. You, I, I'm willing to bet the two towers was Paolini's favorite. Um, of the three, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're being chased across the uh, across the desert yeah. to Helm's Deep. Like, there's there's a lot of two towers in this book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, I definitely. Feel um, there. Brom, Boromir dying. Brom dying. Yeah, a thousand percent. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's, it's great. Like, they're like, okay, well, shit, we gotta go. Literally, as the moment that Murtag is about to, like, spill his secret, which you find out later, that yeah, yeah. Uh, he is the son of Morzan, uh, the worst 
of the Forsake <laughs> Forsworn. Uh, <laughs> yeah, which like, which bugs me. Mm-hmm. Like, I've never really understood the idea of, um, I, like, I, I, I've never really gotten the, well, your dad was evil, so you're evil thing. I, That's it, such a tropey thing in, yeah. like, in literature that I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, people just believe that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but here... It's tough. And and I get it. Like, it, it becomes... I think that it is suspicious because Murtag doesn't want them in his mind. And I get that. Yeah. But, like, even Murtag is like, they're going to hate me because my dad was a really, really bad guy. Yeah. And I'm like... I and, and I think that it's just that I am a person who would never think that. Yeah. You know? Like, I'm nothing like my dad. I don't believe anything similar to my dad. Like... Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's one of those tropes that just is in literature that I, I've never bought into... But I'm like, people use this, so I guess people believe that. But kind like the of whole thing. sins of the father thing is like the base of Attack on Titan. We didn't like it there. Yeah, it's just a trope seven that we don't generations. Like. Yeah. like, I'm sorry, what? Oh, we, Wheel of Time with the like, yeah, the seven generations. If I, if you had a dark friend in your family seven generations ago, then you're, or if anyone in your family for seven generations commits sin, then you're guilty. Yeah, Do in you the white cloak we, stuff? Yeah, Wheel of Time. Yeah, they yeah, introduced yeah. that. That never came back. Yeah, it's like, and it's longer if it's the. I can't remember if it's the mom or the dad, but like <laughs> yeah, it's, it's ten like and... t- ten or thirteen generations or something. I was like, "What the shit is this?" Yeah, and so Murtag's like Murtag's whole angst. Here's the thing: I think Murtag is pr- probably the most interesting character in these books. I I think he's uh, I like Aragon. I always found Aragon to be the least interesting character in these books. Okay. He other than like some he has great moments, but he's the protagonist, and he's he's so locked into that role mm-hmm. that. Some of the other characters in these books get to shine a little bit more as, like, independent, like, characters who have a little bit more depth to them. Yeah. Because they're they're not as hoisted on... Uh, and it's the same reason why, like, I think Samwise Gamgee is a more interesting character than Frodo, right? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of characters in Lord of the Rings that I think are more interesting than Frodo. It doesn't mean I dislike Frodo or, yeah. like, think that he should be written differently. It is... Protagonists are tough. Yeah, yeah. It is really hard to write a good protagonist. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think that even the best written protagonists oftentimes are less interesting than the characters around them. Yeah. Like, when you're talking to a lot of people and you're like, okay, this series, who is your favorite character? A lot of the times it is not the main central character because there's other interesting people around. Arazu, thank you for that super chat. People hating you over your family is a culture thing. I've seen feuds in real life because four generations ago X happened. That's crazy. Arazu, that only really happens, though, in, like, if you live in a place, right? Like, I could understand the people who lived near... Like, I, like, the Garrow Sloan thing, if that was a family thing that goes back generations, mm-hmm. I understand that. Hating somebody because their father was, like, a country away doing something a hundred years ago is, like, a weird... Well, to be fair, he did ride through the viewers and just, like, slaughter people that he found, so... Yeah. So, like, you know, it's... Yeah. Like, he's... Like, Morzan's only been dead for ten years? No, longer than that. No. F- at Fifteen. No. Yeah, because Brom moves into Carvel Hall 15 years ago. Oh, you're right, because Murtag is 18, or 18, he's a bit older than Aragon. He's like 18 or 19, and he got the scar when he was three, and then Mur- Morzan left and died. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but Brom, but Brom kills Murtag 15, and moves yep. into Carvel 15 yeah, years yeah, before yeah. this. Yeah, no, you're right, you're right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was like trying to, math. Yeah, eh, not my um, strong suit. And so Murtag reveals my dad was evil, so everyone's gonna they're so they're gonna hate me immediately and think that I work for Galvatorix. Um Yep. Yeah. Uh even though Murtag's great. Yeah, and Murtag's great. Him and Aragon are just they're they're the best of buds. <laughs> but they are. Two best friends. Literally. Uh yeah. No, they're they're great. I honestly, nothing could ever nothing could ever come between those two. You nothing, know what I mean? Like that not, is an unbreakable bond. Not a single thing. So they meet the cull who are big. Murtag's like, Oh yeah, the cull, I know of them. Yeah, they run from them. And the cull are yeah, they can basically run for days like basically horses, um mm-hmm. and still fight or a battle. Like Urukai. Yes. Yes. So they uh Looks they run... like meets back on the menu, boys. They run to the Varden. On the way, they uh, run into some slavers um, who, who try and take them as slaves. And they're like, uh, no. And then Murtag and Aragon kind of have, like, a moral conflict, which is, like... Because yeah, Murtag cuts the head off of a slaver. Yeah. And I'm like, Aragon, shut the fuck up, you dumb child. Well, but that's why Aragon is 
naive and interesting in a way where he was like, because like Safira's like, look, he did. He, he, what was what was Torkenbrand gonna do? Crawl away and die of thirst? Like, well, and Safira's also like, so like you're fine with him killing slavers if they're holding a sword when he does it. Yeah, you know? and Aragon's like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna have to think about that because I'm not sure. Look, I'm gonna be straight up. If you enslave people, I will happily kill you. <laughs> I would. I would. I would feel. I would feel zero remorse mm -hmm. murdering someone who enslaves another person. Yeah. I, I just, I would not, I would not for one second think about you afterwards. <laughs> Other than to be like, oh, I need to think about how I'm going to like present this in court so that I get away with it. But like, if you enslave people. My sympathy is I think, zero. And I, this is one of those things, because we, we talk about this in a lot of reactions and stuff where I am just like, I, I don't, I don't care if protagonists kill or not. I am not that precious about human life. And a lot of other people are. Yeah. I get it, right? And Aragon is. We see that, right? Like, there, there's a, there's an element of, um, there's an element of, like, the Superman debate, right? Or a Man of Steel, where everyone's so upset that he kills Zod. And, like, I have a couple of issues with that movie. I really like Man of Steel. It's, it's my favorite of the DCU movies, probably. Um, Aquaman's my favorite, but I think Man of Steel is a better film. Um, you're just like the. I just love like Aquaman. Aquaman, and it's yeah. more fun. I would rather watch Aquaman than be depressed that Superman's depressed. Sure. But Zod's death at the end of that, I'm like, yeah, he's gonna kill that kid, like kill Zod. Yeah. I'm, but but, and that is my mentality of like, if you if that person is going to kill someone who is more innocent than they are, I have no problem with that person dying. Right. But that is my moral structure, and uh, people in our comments will be like, if you actually came to it, you wouldn't do it. I, I would. <laughs> like, I don't fucking give a shit about people in the way that other people seem to. Yeah. And I think that that's a me thing. Mm -hmm. But I get frustrated with protagonists who let innocent people die because they're like, no, I can't kill. I have to. Or else my... And I'm like, your moral framework means fucking nothing if children are dead. Yeah. I'm sorry. It just... It doesn't to me. Yeah. And like, I, I you can't stand on your high horse and be like, yes, the babies all died, but I didn't murder anybody. And it's like, well, good for you. The babies are still fucking dead, you idiot. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, Aragon kind of like touches on that lesson with, again, the Urgles at the beginning that he like throws instead of like, Brahm was like, why didn't you just shoot a rock through each of their skulls? <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, and, and like, Aragon has this really interesting lesson to learn. And it's why he's our protagonist, because he wants to be the good of the good. He's he's heard about the riders, right? And how revered they were, and they kept the peace. And, like, mm -hmm. uh, he, like he, he, I think he's, like, trying to live up to this legacy, but trying to figure out, like, what that line is. Because once you cross that line a little too far, like, it's, it's hard to pull back. Like, you need to, like... you. you you need to you need to set a distinction, and he I know, hasn't. But slavers is the it. most. But 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 it's weird though because. But this is his encountering when he's it of being in Hellgrind, like, oh. But when he's in Hellgrind, his anger at the slavery, and the the the, the it, it, it it that's what's weird about it to me is that we see earlier in the book that he does encounter the idea of it, mm -hmm. and the only reason he doesn't kill them in that moment is because he can't get away with it. But he never says he would kill them. He is forming the words to free the guy. Not to oh, kill, sure, sure, sure. Not to kill the captors around him, but just to let that guy go and then realized in his head that if he did that, he would have to kill every person chasing this guy and he still probably wouldn't get away, right? That's fair. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. Yeah. I just, I, I, I sometimes find like our protagonist doesn't kill is just... It, it, it's it's like a comic book thing so that the character, the villains can keep coming back in the Silver Age mm -hmm. that I wish we could move on from because I think that it, it creates stories that... And obviously Aragon doesn't do that because Aragon grows into yeah, something else. Yeah, this is else, his but, first moment of like, what are actu what is my moral compass actually? I just agree with Murtag so hard here yeah. that it was like literally hard for me to relate to Aragon in the moment because yeah. I'm like, no, Murtag killed a slaver yeah, yeah, who yeah. was actively trying to enslave you, Yeah, dude. and Murtag was like, I don't give a fuck. Like it's not even like it. It's not even like they like snuck into the camp, the slavers' camp in the middle of the night and murdered them. No, it's, the slavers attacked them on the road. Yeah, yeah. And Aragon's like, but he could have run away and enslaved other people. Yeah, like it's not like you like convinced he. You didn't convince him to do something different with his life. Yeah, he is not a changed man. So. Yeah, no, I, 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 I agree with you, but it like I, I like I said, it is that like Aragon is like a kid. He's but like, I love I do love I will say, I love that Safira is like, nah, if if we weren't busy with other shit, I would go around and murder every slaver on the planet. And I was like, Safira, 
I get you. Yeah, we get it. We get it. I get you. We stand. We stand. We stand. <laughs> Safira in this house. Absolutely. Uh, and so they. So they run to the garden. They get there. Uh, it's it's pretty tense at the end there. The the coal they almost get them. They cut it real close. They cut it real close. Uh, they're fucking getting attacked under the waterfall. Uh, Murtag has been like, hey, I need to leave before we get to the Varden. Is there like a way out of this valley? There's nope. not. Uh, there were multiple times no, where wait, Murtag could have left. Uh, Murtag decided to stick with them. Yeah. And so Aragon is like, I don't want your fucking bullshit, Murtag. You chose to stay. And Murtag's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I did. Yeah, yeah. He's and like, he I'm owns sorry. that in a very mature way. And I was proud of Murtag for that. Yeah. No, Murtag is a great fucking character. He's great. So they get they get dragged into the Varden, even though they, they were like put shouting the name on the wrong side of the waterfall or whatever, but it's fine because uh, they're saved by Auric, also a great character. Um, totally Auric, forgot about him. Yeah, Auric is a dwarf. And he pulls Aragon out of the, the waterfall, uh, saves them. They they kill all the cull, and because um, suddenly there's just soldiers around killing killing the Urukai. Yeah, because they're they're at the Varden now. Because the fucking walls of the waterfall open and close so seamlessly, you can't even see how they opened. It's pretty cool. It's crazy. It's pretty cool. The the dwarves, man, they do they got some good shit going. So then we're in the tunnels, uh, yeah. and we're taken to a room where. Uh, they're they're they they're these t- the the this bald guy. I guess they're not the twins yet. Obviously, you find out that who are a definitely twin. not evil. <laughs> of course, Guys. they're not evil. Guys. Everybody hates them. The twins, definitely not evil. Yeah, every everybody. Book hates two, them. big heroic moment. <laughs> uh, these characters are definitely good guys. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah. They're they're they they kind of suck. Um. They, uh, they, they, he, like, is, like, if you want to be in the Varden, you have to, we have to literally sift through all your memories to make sure that you're not gonna, like, fuck Which, us over. I, honestly, if I, I if, in a world of magic, a kind of valid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand it. Obviously, they are, like, using that in an exploitative way. Um, and so they search Aragon's yeah. mind, and, like, Aragon is able no, to... No, before they do that, Aragon is like, yes, I will do that. Oh. But first... The elf is dying, Arian and Orc is like, hey guys, the elf is dying, yeah. and they're like, fine, go yeah. heal the elf. They're like, that's Whatever. Arya. If she dies, we fucked. So they take her away. Um, then they delve into Aragorn's mind, and he's able to hide the words of, like, the ancient well, language. Well, Saphira is able to. Yes, he can't. He, he, he... Saphira, like, gives them a guided tour of Aragorn's brain. <laughs> And on this side, the first time Aragon masturbated. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. It was no wonder short. he gets like prickly when they start sifting through his childhood memories. Um, it's a nasty process, very uh, mm-hmm. uncomfy and uh, not fun times. Um, and they're <laughs> orcs like you go too far, and they're like, "It's fine, we got what we needed." Now for Murtag, and Murtag is like, "Not on my watch." Before we do that, uh, Skurbrander says, "I kind of wish the twins are actually good and just kind of buttholes and a false flag for the actual villain." It, that would be an interesting way for them to take it, where they they just suck as people, but they are actually good, as opposed to just being so obviously evil that you're like, and we don't know that they're obviously evil until Aragon gets up to the top of the star and the guy's not there, and you're like, oh, it's because they're bad. Yeah, he's right? like something feels wrong about this. But it's just it's so funny how like how they're terrible at hiding the fact that they're evil. They've just been around so long, right? They're just so bad at hiding it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they, like, they are the worst. Um, yeah. And so they're like, we're going to probe Murtag's mind. And he's like, no, you're fucking not. And they're like, Rrr. and he's like, they can't get into his mind? It is, it is the scene from um, The Force Awakens where Kylo Ren is trying to get into Rey's mind and they're just, like, like, staring at each other. And the... In order to make it interesting, the camera's shaking and there's there's like... Because there's nothing interesting about two people going... Yeah. They just sort of like... That was great podcast content (laughs) for the listeners. Uh, And uh, they get kicked out. And then Oric is like, nah, fuck it, whatever. Let's just go see uh, Ajahad. And they're like, oh, okay. And you're like, that was easy. The dwarf just kind of like overrode them. What are they going to do? He's like, I'm not going to let you into my mind. And they're Here's like, the thing. Okay. They've got rules for a reason? Yeah, but like the king has to be like, all right, this is what we're going to do. Yeah, that's fair. The twins have power. They don't have all the power, thank God. Otherwise, the Varden would be like totally fucked. Uh, more fucked than they are. So they walk for forever. We meet Ajahad. He's a cool dude. He's like... They ride through the... like the Through the through farther door. Yeah. Uh, the, through the like city, which really cool description of. Um, yeah, this is one of those things where like... This is where the world building is so strong. Yeah. It's such a fun idea. Yeah. To have like this city under the mountain. 
that is not just like carved into the mountain, but yeah. actually like is carved the like hole is carved and then built up. Like it's just such a, it's really interesting. The yeah, way there's you, like an opening. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's fantastic. I I, I love Trondheim and Farthingers yeah. so much. Um but yeah, they get to Aja had the leader of the Varden. Um mm-hmm. who's like, all right, lock up Merteg. <laughs> like just throw him in a room. Which I think is fair. Yeah, I think okay. that is Murtag He's like, I could... recognize that voice. That's Mur... the son of Morzan. And everyone's which, like, what? Which, how the fuck? He fought him 15 years ago. Yeah, but why would he sound like his dad? The Tell last time he do. saw his dad, he was three years old. He's never even heard his own dad's voice as an adult. Yeah, I just think, like, genetically your vocal cords can be You similar. don't sound like your parents. <laughs> no, but, like my, like, my brother and I... Like, before my brother's voice dropped, sound very similar. I guess. I just feel like it's... I, I've never heard someone and been like, you sound a lot like a person you don't know. I I, I don't... I mean, that's not a huge leap for me. I know people that, like... Like, I, I knew someone who who sounded like their mom. Like, you know. If you grow up with them, 100%. Yeah. It's the fact that Morzan died at three. Yeah. That And so, like, he was not raised by Morzan. If, he, if he'd known Morzan until he was, like, 12 or 13 or 14, yeah. then, like, oh, yeah, you pick up things from listening to your father, right? Yeah. You pick up, like, speech patterns and you pick up certain words, right? Or, or from, like, a location. It's the fact that Murtag hasn't seen his dad in 15 years. That yeah. I was like, oh, Murtag's voice. I, I just feel like he would have developed differently. Like the timbre would be like maybe it could be the exact same, but his yeah, inflection maybe. wouldn't be. And, and it, it, so it doesn't like, matter because yeah. this is how it works. It's fine. I I you was just, just like, like, huh. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right. Uh, yeah, Murtag gets uh, locked up, and they're like, uh, well, he's like, welcome, Aragon and Samir. Thank you for bringing Arya to us. She's a very important person. Uh, they almost haven't talked to us since she disappeared. So uh, this uh, is going to look good. Th- this book sets up the elves as, like, such temperamental children. Well, they kind of are. Yeah, but they're so old. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's good. It's it's fun. It's just fun that the, he's like, yeah, Arya was attacked by our enemies. And so they were like, we don't talk to you anymore. And I was like, that seems like the there wrong There is a response. reason for that. Oh, no, no, I know. Okay. <laughs> it, it, we'll get to it. The later books make the elves understandable in a different way, right? Yeah. That they're introduced as being very temperamental. Yeah. We, we will understand different things about them later. For but sure. right now it's like, oh, yeah, the elves are like very like... They're kind of like a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, but uh, be- because Oric like defied uh, orders and let Aragon in, Azurhad's like, oh, you're not in my service anymore. You're going to go back to your King Hrothgar. And also, you're going to be tour guides for Aragon and uh, Sephira. Because <laughs> Azurhad, big brain. Big brain. He's doing that on purpose. Um, There's a lot that happens here. Uh, but we're, we're, we're running into time here. So we'll just talk about less quickly. Things happen very quickly they in this eat. last part. We meet Nasuada, who is uh, uh, Ajahad's, Ajahad's daughter, daughter. Yeah. who is maybe like secretly running the Varden for him behind his back. Um, she she does <laughs> things for him. Like, yeah, she, yeah, she's very, very intelligent. Ajahad doesn't really know how much she's doing for him. Potentially, um, yeah. Or maybe he knows, but he doesn't acknowledge it publicly. Yeah. They, they have an interesting relationship. We meet um, Hrothgar, the king yeah. of the dwarves. He's cool as shit. I fucking love him. Yeah. He's old as shit. He's got uh, a cool hammer, Voland. H- Hrothgar rocks so hard. Both Ajahad and Hrothgar are very honest with Aragorn in a way that I found very refreshing. Yeah. Because nobles and leaders are oftentimes like, ah, I'm going to manipulate you by lying. They both manipulate Aragorn, but they do it by telling the truth yeah. and by presenting the reality of the situation, which I think is a very mature thing for Paulini to have written at 15, and I liked it a lot. I, I love it too, and I love that each of them measures up Aragorn in their own way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, Hrothgar's like... What, what you doing here? What's your goals? Like, like what what's what's going on? Because they, they have no idea who this person is. He might, like, Aragon might show up and have his own nefarious reasons for being there. And obviously the twins didn't find that. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist because we yeah. know that, the, that, that it's not perfect. Aragon um, does kind of even insinuate to um, Ajahad that, like, hey, like, they're not as good as they think they are. I am more powerful. Yep. I kind of wish he'd been like, I didn't show them everything. Yeah. He's like, I I'm gave more them power- a guided tour. Yeah. He's like, I'm more powerful than Brahm. And Azurhad's like, oh shit, we need to reevaluate because Brahm was like our most powerful spellcaster. This is not good for us. So then uh, Aragon meets up with Angela and Solombaum who came here because they want to be in the middle of the action. Yeah. yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Which is cute. Yeah. Um, and they. 
basically are like, hey, just be just be careful. Yeah. Don't the, don't fuck uh, around with the twins. They're weird. Yeah, yeah, and the the twins kind of find Aragon while he's in the library, um, and are uh, like, hey, you uh, should come and join our magic guild. And yeah. Aragon is like, no. And they're like, okay, how about you give us an answer tomorrow? And he's like. Sure, the answer is still no. So the next uh, day comes, and we go to the trials. I thought these were big. I, I remember these being a bigger part of this book than they are. Oh, really? It's like three pages. Yeah, no. Basically, they want to assess Aragon's abilities, how far Bron got into his training with Aragon, yeah, like yeah, what yeah, his yeah. strength levels are, how he can hold up in a battle, how much they can rely on him, like that kind of thing. So he heads down to the training grounds, and obviously uh, the twins... Are he supposed to fight... A okay. giant man with yeah, a yeah, with a big sword, a, with a fucking anime sword. L- literally an anime sword. Um, Auric is like, yeah, no one wants to fight you because you keep beating them up with your massive Dick. dong. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the twins show up and they're like, before you fight physically, we will fight magically. Yeah. Um, and then... Kind of. They t- they test him. I but... really like... The, the, there's a couple things I like in this test, but the, the one that I really like is that Aragon is able to do it while talking with Sephira... And him and Sephir are, like, plotting, and he, like, starts to use fewer words. And so, yes, like, they're pushing him in a way that they maybe shouldn't, but I feel like they weirdly make him a better sorcerer in this moment. Yeah. By giving him his first, like, antagonistic, but, like, somewhat safe magic moment. Yeah. Where he can kind of play with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, there's, a, there's an interesting element of... Um, th- there's an interesting element between them of him like needing to get better at using magic in the moment. Yes. And he does. Yes, and more creative, right? Because uh, like what what you can do is kind of limited by your words and your imagination and like playing around with the idea of how can I make the same thing happen but like doing less and revealing yeah. less fascinating, right? Because if yeah. you're fighting somebody and they know the language and they know what you say and what the outcome of that is going to be, then they can predict better or whatever it is. If you can do something kind of unrelated to what you're saying or hide it somehow, it yeah. makes you more dangerous and less predictable. Yo, Fariha, welcome in. Hi, y'all. If you're not following Fariha on Twitch, you're missing out on some great concerts. <laughs> uh, they're a new friend from uh, TwitchCon that I met over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, we shared a flight together and it was <laughs> divine. Thanks for thanks for stopping by. Saying so, hi. I'm sorry I didn't I didn't get to see. We weren't at the actual con. Soon. Yeah, Soon. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's fine, it's fine. So Arya steps in when the twins ask uh They're like, Aragon to get to the meaning of metal and silver. Show summon, me the no, 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 meaning no, 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 no. of ah get silver. Summon the essence of silver. And Aragon is like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, he's like, I don't know what that is. And they're like, any he's basic like, sorcerer would be able to do this. Yeah, and Arya walks up and she's like, shame. Shame she's a bell. on you. Shame. She takes the twins' clothes off and makes them walk nude shame. through the fighting grounds. Shame. Yeah, she is so pissed. Oh my God. She's like, so like, quiet about Arya, that. but played by Hannah... What is her name? Um, like Sister Una? Yeah, that actress. I don't know her name. Actually. Oh my god, that that would be like Milf Arya in like the best way. God damn it. Waddingham is she, her name Hannah Waddingham. I, I she's so good on Ted Lasso. I have no idea. Um, and I, it's I've crazy never that seen her in else. she's the, on Ted Lasso and fucking Game of Thrones. Yeah, like, right. Icon. Yeah, yeah. I would love, I would love like a Milf Arya moment. I mean, she's ancient. Like I she know, is, right? She's old already. Yeah, she's like a thousand. Like, <laughs> yeah, give or take. Cast you know. an older lady. Sure. Give us like fucking Michelle Yeoh, dating a twenty-two year old. It'll be weird to watch. That would um, uh, that yeah that would be that would be. I weird. thought it was Hannah Montana. That'd be weird. Um yeah so uh, Arya's like, I'm gonna do this. Summon the essence of silver, and the twins are like, oh shit, and they literally run away because because they're definitely not evil. Too powerful, uh, too powerful. And so then Arya and Aragon... Uh, Cross blades. Uh, I was going to say dance the spears. Uh, but they do fight. Um, and she is like, yeah, you're great. And everyone's like, okay, You cool. are proficient. And everyone's like, well, that's this... the best swordsmanship I've ever seen. Come to this hill with me. And so they go over to the hill. And... Uh, You're running up that hill. Arya and Aragon talk for the first time. Mm. Talk out loud for the first time. They talked in their brains. They mind link before. Yeah. And she describes this moment that made me laugh so hard Mm -hmm. for the darkest reason. And I want to warn you, 
I was laughing for a very dark reason before we get into this. Oh, God. Okay. She's describing the torture oh, that she went through. Oh, I know exactly. <laughs> Yes. I can't get over this. Because I, 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 I know that 15-year-old Paolini was like... This is brilliant. This is brilliant. <laughs> this is brilliant. And honestly... Their methods were harsh. When torture failed, he ordered his soldiers to use me as they would. I stopped there and was like, I forgot that Arya was violently raped by the bad guys. No, because yeah. the next sentence, you got to keep reading. Don't stop in the middle of a paragraph. Fortunately, I still had the strength to nudge their minds and make them incapable. <laughs> Arya's out here doing reverse Viagra, being like, you cannot have boner. <laughs> and I was reading this, and I started to just... No, you know what she it does? It is so funny. The idea that the, 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 the Durza the Shade is like, I need you to sexually assault that woman. And she is like, soft wieners. <laughs> And they're like, we're trying, sir, but we can't get hard. It's like the in Glee when Finn is, like, trying not to come. <laughs> and he imagines, like, getting into the car accident and hitting somebody with the vehicle. Uh, yeah, that exists in these books. Um, I, it's so, it's. It's wild. It's so funny. And I appreciate him being like, I don't want my lead female character to be sexually assaulted. Yeah. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I think it's handled it's well. it's super easy to be like, yeah, we tortured and raped her. And there is dark stuff in these books. And I like that he leans into like the darkness of this world with the yeah. baby on this pike. And the, the, you know, the slavery auction is like a very dark scene. And there's very dark stuff here. And I, I just appreciate him like leaning into the idea that this is something that would happen in this world. And there's the reality of it, but also saving our main character mm -hmm. from it yeah. in a way that allows us to not have to like deal with her trauma from that for the rest of the series, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and, yeah, it's, it just, I still had the strength to nudge their, nudge their minds and make them incapable, which implies that Arya also has the ability to make Aragon hard with her mind, which I think is hilarious. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I Yeah, I guess if you could, like, get into some mind, the flaccidator. you make them horny or not horny, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I never thought about the other I side of the implications of that. I but... completely forgot that that sentence was in this book, and it made me chuckle. I had forgotten, actually, as well. Yeah. That was not a part that, like, stood out to me when I was, like, a teenager reading this. I was like, I don't know, whatever. And so if it's you're great. at this point in the book, and you're like, okay, he's got the trust of the Varden. They're, they're in Trondheim. What? There's only, like, 30 it's pages left. On. Yeah, this is... What? Ha where, where is this going? Because there's not really a direction for this. Mm -hmm. It sort of just seems like this book is kind of, like, winding down without a climax well, or without Arya's any like, direction. Arya's like, okay, you, you're ready for your training with the elves. And it's like, But, but that's no, not even what happens, okay. right? Ar no, he's like, no, oh, yeah. what, when is this going to happen? And she's like, in a few weeks. Yeah, don't worry we'll about it. We'll figure that like, out. It, the, the book kind <laughs> of... They should have introduced the fight a little bit earlier. Because this, at this point, the book kind of has this weird... There isn't enough left for me to believe that we're going to start another thing. But, but we do. We're not really going anywhere. And this is what I mean about the finale just sorts of... pop. Like It's like the streaming show problem that I talked about with uh, Ahsoka. Sorry, only patrons know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> some These streamers don't really know how to set up a finale. And this book kind of doesn't either. The, the next chapter just starts with... They're here, we're fighting. Yeah, because they get... It's just kind of out of nowhere. They kind of get ambushed in a way, right? We've we we, we we've had the foreshadowing throughout the books that the uh, Urgles are congregating, they're migrating for some reason uh, across the desert, over the mountains. Very strange. This is an odd thing. Then we find that note, you know, these Urgles are supposed to be going somewhere specific. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then they literally get a scout running through the tunnels who should be dead and is like, hey, the Urgles are a day away or less. Yeah, yeah. Like, they, they are on their way. And Oryx's like, wow, it's a good thing we had this much notice. And I was like... I kind of wish... Goddamn. J j just to motivate the finale a little bit more for Aragon, mm -hmm. I kind of wish that he chose to stay and fight. Right? Like, I kind of wish the book had set up that, like, hey, this is your moment. We, up until now, we haven't demanded loyalty. Ajahad comes to him and is like, I am not saying that you have to fight. You can go. You are important to the world. It might be better if you left. I think that you should leave. Hmm. But I'm going to leave it in your hands. Do you do you stand with the Varden? Mm. Like I think that if I think that if the book positioned the the at least one moment of the final fight as Aragon has to because they just kind of are like, all right, here's the plan, here's what we're doing. And they're like, all right, here, let's go do the thing. Yeah. I think that if it had been posed as 
the the because the whole book is kind of leading up to Aragon having to make a choice. Right. And I wish that the finale had a stronger moment of him choosing to be with the Varden. Okay. By the, by the by Varden giving him an opportunity to leave before the fight starts. Gotcha. Right. By the Varden being like, here's Murtag, here's horses, here's a way out. He, this is the direction of the elves. Here's Arya on a horse. Mm-hmm. We need you to leave because it is more important that you survive than than we do yeah. because you're our only chance. And Aragon is the one that goes, no, I am going to stay here and do this fight because that is what a rider does. I cannot become the hero that you need later if I am not the hero that you need now. And I just think it it would have been two pages. It would have been really easy to do. Mm-hmm. And it just would have motivated the finale from Aragon's point of view as opposed to it just feeling like, well, it's happening so we have to do it. Yeah, I think what wouldn't really have worked or made sense for me in that case is that the Varden being like, yeah, you and Murtag know where we are now. If you get captured, you can like reveal all this information. But they, but the Argyls already know where they are. The battle's happening. Uh, yeah, but they like they know how to like get in, like the password and like the inner the workings Urgles, of it. The Argyls already in the tunnels. That none of that matters anymore. Literally, none of that matters anymore. They already have the location. The Urgles are there. Yeah, I guess so. Right. Like the the password doesn't matter because the Urgles have bypassed it. Yeah, no, way. no, yeah, that's fair. That's I, I, fair. I just, I just think it would pay off the theme of Aragon having to make a choice a little bit. Right. And it would, I think that it would be a really good moment for the Varden to be like, if we lose you, all of this was for nothing anyway. Mm-hmm. So you should leave. Right. And Aragon is one that says, no, I have to be here. Well, and they would have been fucked if he left. A hundred percent, right? But like. A lot of times those stories are told that way. Yeah, and, sure. and sometimes you do have to leave and leave people to die in order to get a victory in the future, right? Mm-hmm. And so I just, I, I, I it, it's a small thing, but just because the finale just kind of comes out of nowhere, that's that, that's just my thing. I wish Aragon made a stronger mm-hmm. choice to be there for it. Yeah. Rather than it just sort of being like assumed yeah, that he yeah. was there for it. I you hear know? you. We do also find out that Murtag is like chilling in a nice room with yeah. lots of books. Like he's like he's actually like happy. He's like he's you know great. what? I think I I don't mind this. Yeah, this is fine for now. I'm I would have content. stayed in my room anyway. Like yeah, it doesn't really matter. So you know, Ajahad is like a man of honor. He's like he's taking care of Murtag because Murtag has not proven himself to be an enemy. Yeah, right. You know, everyone's very and also cautious like, at first, but if he can't help, we it's, it's an all hands on deck situation. Yes. Well, that is what happens, right? They they're like, okay, battle is coming. Urgles are coming. We need to collapse the tunnels. We need to funnel them in specific directions so that we know where they're about to come out so we can set up our attack. Very cool. And yeah, Ajahad just like let's murtag out and it's like he's either going to be locked in a room or he can help us and if he betrays us we'll just shoot him <laughs> yeah you know what i mean like and so uh the battle begins they come through the tunnels they drop some pitch on them <gasps> so they actually cool armor. they drop hot shit on them they which makes sense it. yeah because if you have a wall or a hole and your enemy has to come up it drop shit on him <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Maybe everyone um, in the chat knows exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> one thing I love about the the dragon armor, uh-huh. it can sometimes be hard to introduce something like that in a series. Mm-hmm. Pal- and th- again, like I, I feel like I am crediting Paulini so much in this book club with choices that he made because yeah, he th- he made great choices. <laughs> I would be I would be like you made dragon armor in a week, like really right. We have a vault. It, it sh- this should probably fit. It kind of does. Yeah, it's not it perfect, fits. but you'll outgrow it eventually. It it's it makes so much sense given the amount of time that they've had, and like and and the and, the, and it's world building that sets up the past world, right? Like I think yes. that some of the things that I complain about in writing and complain about in TV shows, he avoids those really deftly in his writing. Mm-hmm. And this is another one, right? Like the vault is such a great choice here mm-hmm. to bring some armor for Safira, and like the idea of like you don't think dragons didn't wear armor, do you? Like that's insane. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I remember the shade and Aragon flying in the sky of Tron Time fighting. And I remember where that's from. Reading this, I was like, oh, yeah, that's uh, they made that up for the movie. Don't even fucking get me started. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, yes. But, but, the one thing I will credit the movie with is the smoke that uh, the shade flies on is pretty cool. Sure, it looks cool. It's the, the, it is the it is the, there are, there's a few things I'll credit the movie with. I actually, the, like, I, I like Safira's design for it. 
I think she looks no! good. No! No! She looks like fucking pebbles. She's supposed to look like fucking sapphires, and she's so dull. Oh, no, no, The color, no, no, but the dragon, the, 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 Fine. the like, the, the shape of her and Fine. the movement of her. For the CGI Fine. at the time, I think they did a pretty good job. Fine. Um... I think that the Durza smoke is cool. I actually, the, I think Jeremy Irons is great in that movie. I think the uh, Jeremy Irons is always the great. actor plays Durza in that movie. I think is really good. Um, oh, it's yeah, a tough yeah. role, but um, I, I don't love the guy who plays Aragorn very much. Um, <laughs> That's why but, he's like not really done anything since. Uh, it's tough. Yeah, I, I, and like that could be direction or whatever. Uh, and oh, man, we're we're gonna the first flight is really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's nonsense how it gets to that point, but the first flight is really well done. It's fine. Movie. I know. We'll watch it. Uh, <clears throat> yep, yep. Um, so yeah, big battle happens. Um, it, uh, it it goes by very quickly. It's definitely not Robert Jordan. <laughs> no, it's so fast. It's it's very fast, mm -hmm. and uh, and it gets to the thing that is the funniest thing about this book to me, because I did some math. So they fight on the ground. Oh, wait, it's before, not going well. They bop around. Before we get to that, I actually appreciated that this book, the scale of numbers is much smaller in terms of people. There's only yeah. 4,000 Varden, right? There's only a couple yeah. thousand Urgles. Like, we're not in the hundreds of thousands, which I honestly find very overwhelming in a lot of series. This made, yeah. this made the fight we'll more get there later, tangible. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this made the, this more tangible for me in book one, and I, I just want to say I appreciate that. Yeah, it is uh, Robert Carlyle. That's the name I was forgetting. Plays Durza. He plays Rumpelstiltskin on Once yes. Upon a Time. Yes, 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 yes. Look, I Once Upon a Time is a weird show. I can't recommend all of it. No. I can't. Because it's, it, it's got watching. hits and misses. But Robert Carlyle yeah. is so fucking good on that show. He's an incredible actor. I'm on strike, so I, shan't, I shouldn't be talking about this. You know what? But. Yeah, more, never mind. We're moving, moving on. on. Moving on. Um, uh... So your favorite part, the math part. Guys. No, no. So they fight. Uh, Aragon's life is saved by Angela at one point, who yeah. is fighting with a sword, which is hilarious. No, she's fighting with a staff with sword blades on. Oh, your it's like a glaive thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On both sides. Yeah. I, I yeah, she, but she's like a she's like a warrior. Yeah. Um, and uh, it bops around. Uh, Safira ends up taking a blow to the chest, so she has to fly away because the the armor is like pressing in on her chest. And so she's having a hard time breathing. Yeah. So Aragon leaves Arya to take that off of her while he goes to the under the city where a new tunnel's being dug. No, so uh, first of all, he gets contacted by the twins mentally. And they're like, there's loud sounds underneath Trunchan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, they, I think the Urgles are breaking in, which is why they head back to the city to Isidar Mithrum uh, to go investigate this. Because we're like, if the Urgles break in in here and we lose the city, we are fucked. That, 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 that's why they're about to head there, but Saphira takes the wound to the chest. She takes it as they're, as they're yeah, taking yeah. off. And so yeah. they go to the dragon hold. Um, and so Aragon has to get from the dragon hold down to the base of Trondheim. It's set up earlier in the book that there is a slide that will do this for him. Voltorin, okay. uh, yes. Okay, so the slide next to the stairway is so fast that it is built only for dwarves and anyone larger might fall out. Obviously, Aragon doesn't fall out, but this He's is what he says. He's probably not that tall. <laughs> it was a swift descent. It was a swift descent. Uh -huh. But it still took him nearly 10 minutes to reach the bottom. Now, 10 minutes is 60 seconds 10 times which means that there are 60 seconds of Aragon sliding down a slide. Now, assuming, and I'm gonna be so fucking generous here because this would not be a swift descent in my opinion, but assuming you're going one story every three seconds, which is one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, uh -huh. which is a pretty slow slide. Sure, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means that Aragon goes 200 stories in 10 minutes. Now, you might be thinking 200 stories. We have buildings that tall. The fuck we do? The Burj Khalifa, the tallest building on the planet, is 163 stories tall. Mm -hmm. The tallest... It, it implies that Aragon, in the middle of a war zone, is whipping down a slide. Yes. Slow, uh, kind of slowly, actually, because he gets three seconds per story. For the length of the Burj Khalifa... Plus 40 fucking stories. Yes. Do you know how long 10 minutes is? Chris Farlini, it should have been said, it felt like forever. It was 
<laughs> a very long time. Uh-huh. But when you give me an exact amount of time that this character is sliding down a fucking slide, my brain goes, the fuck he was? He would be at the center of the goddamn planet. Did he start at the top of Everest? How? Yes, he did. No, he, he didn't. Did. Because he can't go that high up the mountain because there's no oxygen and they die. Well, he's not at the top, but like the BRs are very tall. They're tall, but... Yeah. The, but he he if if it was 10 minutes of sliding down mm-hmm. it would be unreasonable for this thing to have been built it would have taken like a Took thousand dwarves, generations the, yeah the dwarves are old and the, okay here's the problem with that dwarves have short legs they're very small people they would not be able to get around their own fucking city it would take a dwarf like, like fucking a year to, to go climb home. Up to the top. <laughs> They're like, oh, I've got to go to work in three days. I need to leave now. Yeah. It is the most impractical. <laughs> the I was fine reason, with Tron look, time. Look, look, I was no. fine with it until he was on the slide for 10 minutes. The only reason it's funny is because there's a staircase that goes up. And so if it takes 10 minutes to slide down, how long is the ascent? It would be, it would be taller than the Burj Khalifa. Like it would be, it would be like having to climb up the fucking Calgary Tower six times. Woof. Yeah. It yeah. is. It is like it is the most insane sentence in these books. And look, I will suspend my disbelief it's for fine. magic, for dragons, uh-huh. for Urgles, for coal. I will do it. But when you tell me that the slide takes ten minutes to go down and that it is a fast slide, look, if he was like kind of just like scooching his butt down and it took a minute, I would mm-hmm. get it. But he's whipping around so fast that he feels <gasps> ill. Sanders makes a good point. What if the spiral is very, very wide? So you're going really fast, but you're not actually going, like you're only going down like this much because it's just around and around and around and around. How like is that very faster tight... than walking though? Than walking down, well, because it says it is. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Look, I hear you. I hear you. It's it just I, it's a bit wild. You can't if if you can't give me an exact number like yeah. ten minutes. Do not and give not expect me numbers. to like think about the reality of ten yeah. minutes. Ten I've minutes on never a slide is about it. ten minutes on a slide is so long. Like there would be a point in the middle there where you would be like, "Is this ever fucking like Aragon should have gotten bored." Yeah. It's amazing he's not just like covered in vomit when he gets up. Well, he back. has to lay down for a few minutes at the he gets to the end and he's like. Can you imagine being on a roller coaster <laughs> that had a 10 minute descent? Oh, look, I would love and you're that, like, but. Ah! No, you wouldn't. You would I love would it love for it. like 30 seconds. And then there would be a no, point where no, you're like. No, I love the feeling in my tummy. Yeah, I know, but that feeling would go away because your body would settle. And you would just yeah. be kind of like, so. How's everybody doing? Ten minutes, guys. I don't think you understand how long ten minutes is. We've all experienced ten it's minutes. It's so long. Every single person here has experienced ten minutes. You don't know that there could be no a baby who is younger. just born right now. If any of you are babies less than ten if minutes, if you are old, watching the book club while giving birth, what what are you doing? Are you it doing? will be on YouTube later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah. voice cannot be the soothing thing you need to hear when someone in the background is like, push. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, definitely. Clench your vaginal canal. Anyways, uh, ten minutes, lady. Oh my god. Ten, I, ten minutes later. Sorry. Ten, 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 ten minutes, lady. Uh, uh, the average length of a YouTube video later. Uh, Blue says it's the length of this specific argument. <laughs> 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 Very well done. Very well done. Reese, I, Reese has never experienced ten minutes. I have time blindness, Lamel. I feel that. Anyways. You, here's the funny thing. You have no idea how long 10 minutes is. No, I don't. I really, <laughs> really, really don't. Uh, anyways, uh, anyway, Aragon this is, field this is, positions this for is, five minutes. I want to be really clear. This is not a problem doesn't with the book. Matter. It yeah, doesn't yeah. matter at all. I I just think it is so funny. Yeah. It is fine. Guys, before anyone is like, oh, wow, you're really nitpicking. This I'm not even complaining. Mm. I thought it was hilarious. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it is just the funniest part of the whole book to me. Yeah. The idea of Aragon just doing this for 10 minutes is fucking hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so they get to the bottom. And then at the bottom, and then at the bottom, someone goes, he fell. <laughs> he fell. Uh, suddenly, the floor explodes, and Urgul start pouring out yeah. of it, and uh, so does Durza. There's a, there's a steps up, and is like, gotcha, bitch. Yeah, and, and so like, Aragon oh, and Durza shit. fight, and Aragon loses, and then Saphir crashes through the ceiling. <laughs> well, 
Arya <laughs> breaks the star sapphire and Safira breathes fire. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What? Guys, ugh, fuck. I just realized that thing I said only happens once in this book. It happened a second time what? in this book. <laughs> Uh, yes, it is is foreshadowing. That is uh, a literary device um, that a lot of authors use. Um, it's fun. It's great. They break the the big shiny rock. Mm-hmm. Um, that is the most prized position of the. Aragon course. takes a takes a swipe up the Stab back to the back that Sliced gives him. him a dirty old scar. Sliced him. Sliced him. <laughs> and uh, he finds this owner strength. Seen Safira and seen Arya, this woman uh, that he thinks is really hot. Um, who uh, he did see naked at one point because uh, he was healing her and he was like He's blushing like, about it, but he was live. also like, well, damn elves, do. <laughs> um, and uh, they crash through and yeah. he l- brisingers his blade mm-hmm. and stabs it through... Uh, Durza's heart. Durza's heart, killing Durza. the shade. Yeah, he gets this really cool montage of... Um, because Durza and Aragon brain fight. Right and uh, uh, Aragon brain fight, brain fight. Uh, Aragon breaks through his defenses and mm-hmm. gets this like flood of of memories of Durza and how he kind of came to be. We do know that in the that we we didn't talk about it, but um, shades are created by being sorcerers who wield spirits who are too powerful, and those spirits male- malevolent spirits take over their bodies. Yeah, and so we meet Kasib or Kasib, Karsib, Karsib, uh, and uh, we meet him as a child in the memories and see that like he was. Even he became a shade because of tragedy and because of this, like, because of the difficulties of the world created by Galbatorix, right? Yeah. Like, Durza was an innocent kid at one point who became this because of Galbatorix's. Yeah. He, he lived through a trauma that created him because of the world that was created because of the trauma of Galbatorix. Yeah. And I, I think that, like, what I, what I love about the memories, um, A, is that... Knowing later stuff, and mm-hmm. this isn't really a spoiler, but like the memories and the way that we exist in the world are, becomes really important, right? Yeah. Um, and and legacy is such an important part of this series. Mm-hmm. Like you know, in this way, Aragon is Brahm's legacy, killing the shade and be, being led to the Varden. Um, Murtag is struggling with being Morzan's legacy, right? Yeah. Um, th- that's such an important thing here. But also the ripple effect of trauma. And the generate the way generational trauma is passed down, even though Galvatorx doesn't have kids as far as we know at this point. Um, and honestly, I don't know if he has kids or not. Can't remember. Um, I literally don't know. He uh, might, yeah. He might. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember these books at all. We'll um, get, we'll but but the, the, the generational trauma that is passed down through society in this scene, I think, is really evidenced in this scene, rather. Uh-huh. Um, and I think that's a really strong part of the inheritance cycle. And I think that it's why I like that it's called inheritance cycle. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, I, I don't think this book is perfect. I, I, I think that it has some like flaws. I think the villains are kind of weird uh, and what they're trying to accomplish doesn't really, I, I get it, but it also like doesn't really work for me. But at the same time, thematically and emotionally, there's such strong stuff in this first book. And I, I care about the world enough that I want to read the next one. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think that, this book is very successful in so many ways. For a fifteen-year-old, it is more successful than it really should be. Um, like, it yeah. would be a good the book shit written by that an adult. I wrote when I was fifteen. Oh my god! The fact that he was a kid—it's—it's it's really remarkable what he accomplished. Absolutely. Um, but the thematic ending and and choosing to have the final fight be more about what Durza's trauma led to, or what Karsiv's trauma le- leading to Durza was, mm-hmm. than it was actually about the fight, is such a like emotionally resonant choice for a 15 year old to make yeah that i i was really like struck by it at the end Mm -hmm. Uh, i was like oh my god i forgot that this series is about so much more than dragons spewing fire on bad guys well and it's that's reflected it becomes that here for me yeah that is reflected in aragon shortly afterwards and his being his being passed out and his like literal battle with like this like madness inside him because of the pain of the wound that durza gives him um, and the remnant of the spirit that inhabited Durza, like, trying yeah. to inhabit him, right? Oh, you think that's what happens? That's interesting. I've never read it like it's that It's like before. looking for a new host. Well. I've always, I've huh. always read that as he, he, like, his battle with that spirit, that magical spirit doesn't end until he is able to fully, like, be himself in his mind. Interesting. I never read it that way. Oh, I just figured because I figured. No, that's cool. He, uh, that's really he, cool. He's experiencing it literally. 
Like he's like having, he's struggling against something literally. So I, I figured it was just, because it's a spirit that is pulled in through magic. I just, that's what I said. Yeah. I always took it as the, 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 the literal pain from the, the wound that he has faced. A, a wound that like lingers, right? Um, that, that it was a, a actual representation of him battling like a madness. Like, you know, some people go through uh, so much pain, either like through tragedy or through physical pain that it like breaks them. Um, hmm. I, I, I always thought it was more of like a, a pain thing, but that's, that's super interesting. I never thought of it like that. Oh, that's interesting. I, yeah, yeah. I just always assumed it was the lingering shade. Yeah. Cause I, cause they say that like the spirits kind of like fly through Farland door and that's what makes the Yurgles like retreat, but yeah. it's multiple spirits. So one of them, yeah, like could have tried to maybe take over Aragon's body. I don't know. Like, we should have, we should have asked Christopher Paolini at New York Comic Con. We should have asked him. All right. Well. Just like, well, one day I asked Brandon Sanderson how many letters Matt wrote. Um, oh my god. <laughs> I right. love that you guys are talking about how many fireworks it would take for a dragon. I don't know what's going on in the chat. <laughs> Y'all are a mess. Don't worry about it. Uh, so yeah, Aragon does win. He wakes up, uh, and, uh, he wakes up in bed, and he's he got a matching he's star. like, Arya, <laughs> Murtag, and then an elf walks in, and he's like, I, I don't know that one's name. It's Legolas, but he never learned Legolas' name. Uh, <laughs> he just smiles at him. He just him. smiles at him. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> deep cut, deep cut. I like it. I like it. Um, and uh, he is uh, um, he is reached out to by uh, the cripple who is whole. Togira Okinawa. The the book is like, hey, we know that this we know that this kind of didn't lead you anywhere to go. So in the epilogue, um, we're Come just to gonna me. like steal from Empire Strikes Back, and Obi Wan Kenobi's ghost is gonna appear and be like, yo, meet Yoda on Dagobah. You must go, Luke. You must go to Dagobah. To be fair, to be fair, Aragon was already gonna go to the elves. Oh, a hundred percent. I just, <laughs> yeah. I, I found it very, uh, it was very reminiscent of Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, to me. yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Um, and uh, that's kind of. And that's of, Aragon. That's that. That is Aragon. Angela manages to heal him, but um, mostly. I. It's interesting. Mostly. Uh, we'll talk about it later. Yeah. Yeah. Clarus, we Spoilers. did it. We did Three it. Three hours and twenty minutes. We did one whole book, five hundred pages. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Crushed it. I'm really glad we're doing this. Me too. I, look, I know the viewership is going to be lower for this than the Wheel of Time was because we're yes. rereading and it's not, you know. But um, I really love this series. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember thinking that I liked Aragon, but that it got good after Aragon. And having reread it now, I think that that was a narrative that I think I picked up along the way. Yeah. Because I think that there's a lot of really strong writing here. Yeah, there's a lot of people who are like, you know, oh, this kid wrote this book. And so a lot of like, mm, you know, people with sticks up their butts were like, mm, well, it's mm, childish and derivative and not very complicated. And it's like, well, th I think there's actually more here if you take a second to fucking think about it. Um, and so, yeah, I think that a lot of the narrative of like that Aragon as the first book like is bad um, is kind of blown out of proportion in a way that a lot of things are, right? I, right? I think but, it's because there is some weak stuff in here. Yeah. Like, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, villain yeah. motivations are a little weird. The whole, like, yeah. Galbatorix does, doesn't get involved yet because... But Galbatorix is already more interesting than all of the Forsaken. Oh, a uh, thousand percent. <laughs> you know, so is like, Durza, though, right? Like, yeah, absolutely. Even, like, Durza, the, d because of the flashback sequences. Without those, I don't think he is. Sure, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I do like this. Uh, Skurbrander Mike says, if it makes any difference, Reddit has determined Aragon coming down the slide was going somewhere between three miles per hour to 218 miles per hour. Wow. That's a range. Very helpful. It's a, it's a range. Very, very helpful. But here's the thing. Miles, like, are you talking miles, like, vertically or, or no just... No speed. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> like I said, it might be a really large spiral, you know? Yeah. Um, um, I don't know. I look. I don't think it's perfect, but I think that it is um, mm -hmm. a very enjoyable read and an, uh, certainly an accomplishment for a child to write. Like, absolutely. You know, and I, I'm excited to get into the other books because I do remember. Like, I I grew with this series, so and I'm excited yeah. to watch it grow again in absolutely. remembering it. But mm -hmm. as a first book, this was this is pretty fucking good. Yeah, yeah. I lo like you guys already know. I love it. I love this series. I'm so excited to talk about it with you. It uh, it brings me joy, and I hope that it brought you some joy as well. Kevin uh, L. Stevenson, thank you for that super chat. 
Thank you should you. read the Dark Tower series by Stephen King for book club. After Cosmere, who knows? Maybe we will. Maybe. Yeah. I definitely think in the next like two years we'll do all of the Cosmere. We'll probably fit in all the Expanse in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Fourth Wing this December. I think we're going to start breaking it up a little bit more. I think that one of the things that happened with Wheel of Time for the book club was that it got a little trudgy. Right. Especially with the slog, you know, and, and having to just push, push, push through. And so I think, yeah, I think, and, and we're, we're going to play around because Clarice doesn't like reading a bunch of things at the same time. Um, so we're going to find a balance that we both like. Mm -hmm. But I think moving forward, we're going to, you know, we're going to do a bunch of stuff and we're going to read a bunch of books. I, I want to do new books on the cl book club. Yeah. Um, and like, you know, we're, we're just going to, I, I, I don't want this show to be something that ends with a series. And no. so we're just going to keep finding new stuff to do and we're going to talk There's about books on here. There's so many books in the world. Yeah, and I think I might make some content. I, I think I want to start making some videos about books that aren't just the book club. Yeah, yeah, for um, sure. Have a little bit more of a booktube thing going on on the channel. So. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but I I was kind of nervous because I left it late to do the reading this week. Mm. And the book was so easy to pick up and read that I was grateful for that. And I had a great time. You're going to have to start Eldest right away. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, which is book I, I love. It might be my favorite out of the four, personally. Uh, but thank you. Thank you all for being here for a fantastic book club. This yeah. Was really fun. This was this was great. Yeah. I can't believe we got through it all. I know. I know. Do we want to do a high-low? Ooh, yep. High-low. Uh, we might do Smut Corner at the end. I don't know how we're going to Smut Corner this book. It feels a little weird. Look, uh, who is adults? Like yeah, because I'm not going to Smut Corner children. No, Brahm and Joe had hanky-panky fun times when they were younger. You know what? Um... Snowfire is a woman, right? Snowfire and Tornak. The horse? Yeah. No, he's a stallion. Well, oh, they can be gay horses. <laughs> Great. I love it. Yeah, the horses, horses are fucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they're yeah. adults. Absolutely. Yeah, it's weird. I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not smut cornering with a child. No, you know no, what I mean? no, I, I hear you. Brahm and, and it's mostly Brahm and like, I'm not smut cornering like Murtag and Aragon together. No, um, they're, yeah, they're not of age. That's why I said yeah. Brahm and Jode when they're Brahm and Jode. Gallivanting. Yeah, when they're gallivanting. No, you know what? You know what? You, smut corner. What? Helen, after Brahm makes that comment to her, Helen gives Jode the night of his life as an apology for like, for being a little... For being a little tough on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I love that. Can we go to Chop Leaf after and get food? Sure, yeah. I we have to go love. get groceries. I, so. Yeah, but can we get food first? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Hi, Lo. Uh, for those of you who don't know, when I was a child, my family uh, was blended. I got a stepdad. I got stepsisters. I got a half-brother. Uh, the way that we became close as a family is we bonded over high-low at dinner time, mm -hmm. where we would celebrate each other's highs. We'd commiserate over each other's lows. Uh, we did this every night, and so we did it every book club. Clarice is going to start with her high. I'm going to do my low. She'll do her low. And then I'll do my high because we compliment sandwich this biche. Clarice, will you tell us what is your high from the novel Aragon? This is so hard. Yeah, because it's a whole book. <laughs> it is a whole ass book. And, and I have read so many it highs. So many, so many highs. Yeah. So many highs. I'm going to say that I think my high was rereading it as an adult mm -hmm. and realizing why I loved it the way that I did and like truly understanding the things that the why the highs are the highs I love I that I know that's like kind of like weirdly specific but like rereading this was a fucking treat mm -hmm. and I'm so glad that we're doing it yeah um I love that yeah what is your low uh the Razak's whole like plot how they got to where yeah, yeah sure the Razak like leaving is just weird to me mm -hmm. yeah and and like it's fine it is what it is it just it the, the the like plot of this book doesn't really quite make sense to me it's just the villains making bad choices but where it takes us i love a lot yeah. so I'm, I'm fine with it it's kind of also my low as well but little also bit like le not specific in there and a little bit muddy it's kind of like eye of the world where like i really like eye of the world as a book mm -hmm. but like why they go to the eye of the world when they do is just sort of like, well, the three of you both had visions of the same place, so let's just do it. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah, I guess. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what's your high? What's your low? Oh, I said it was basically the same. Like, it's a little bit Lame. muddy in that, in that plot. Yeah. Um, yeah. My high is really... Oh, fuck, that's hard. I don't know. I know. I, I, I think that, like, there's I, there might be higher highs after it, but the initial reverence with which Aragon looks at Saphira is so good and it is what the whole book is built on. It's beautiful. Um, and so I think I have to go with that because it is the thing that I think made this a bestseller. Yeah. Because I think this book actually, I think the, the first half of this book is stronger than the second half. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think the second half is a little bogged down in exposition and world building. But I think the like the relationship between Brahm and Aragon and Brahm and Sephira and Sephira and Aragon that and their travels together and the learning about it from Brahm, I, I think that that is the stronger half of this book. Mm-hmm. Um, it's when the plot is just a little bit easier to follow and and doesn't is a little bit stronger. And it's all built on this idea that this young boy found something that changes his life so profoundly and is able to like view it with such splendor and magic. Yeah. Um, and I, and, and, and danger, right? Like he chafes his legs so badly and stuff, but even in that he's able to love Sephira, I think that's the strongest part of the book for me. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. There's, yeah, there's a lot. Obviously it's a whole ass book, so it's hard to like pick a thing, but there's so much good in here. And Jonathan, uh, uh, Neil says the, uh, the high was the funeral slash tomb. Yeah, I get, I get that. That part, like that, that it's gets so me every time. It's yeah. Her booping it and then it turning to diamond. It's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, it's cool. It is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for an awesome book club. I know Tuesday is kind of a random day, but one thing we didn't talk about that I just want to mention really quick. Sure. I love that. Um, usually elves and humans are just kind of like interchangeable, but one lives forever. You know what I mean? And is pettier. Uh, I love that when he sees the images from Arya's brain when they connect he kind of can't follow it properly because they're a different They're race. different enough. Yeah. I thought that was a really smart choice and yeah. I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that too. Uh, all right. Uh, how are we feeling about Tuesday Book Club? Uh, Anson <laughs> Echol like says they like Tuesday. If you have opinions on it, we'll join see. the Discord. Um, join the Discord. You know, I think Leave it's going to be interesting <laughs> to see how this plays out um, in the numbers and whatnot and we'll yeah. see if people, if people hate it. We might go back to Fridays. It just does mean canceling more often than not. So we'll see. Yeah. Uh, if you like this video, like and subscribe to the channel. If you don't hit the dislike button, leave me in comments down below because the algorithm god is hungry and we must feed her this episode that algorithm goddess is. That would be uh, Sephira. <laughs> Sephira. She's always hungry. She is on the cover. Uh, nice. If you want to follow us around the internet, you can. I'm at Nerdy Nightly. I'm at Clarus Polaris. If you would like to, please go over to Apple, Spotify, all the places, and give us five star reviews. Uh, we will go back to reading those. We haven't done it in a while, but I True. will go troll the interwebs for those five star reviews, find them, and uh, make that happen because I it is the best way for us to grow as a podcast. Yes. Uh, and. Um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, Joe G says, wait, but Nerdy isn't locked out yet. That is very funny. <laughs> Call back. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to we're gonna try and grow this show and be a, a book a book club for all now that we're done with the Wheel of Time. <laughs> Love um, it. And, uh, you know, I, I also think like that our content is going to be changing in the next bit. Um, I evolving feel evolving like Pokemon. Yeah, I, I, I ran into a wall and I got a little burnt out and I felt like I kind of was pushing through a bunch of stuff and our content got a little bit negative. Mm-hmm. And I, I've seen the comments. I understand where people are coming from and I think you're you're not wrong um, necessarily. I still stand by the things that I said, but I, I'm, I'm really dedicated to working on my messaging. Um, and I hope that uh, today reflected that and I hope the content we have coming out in the next few weeks reflects that as well as I try and uh, be a little bit better at this and grow... <laughs> and continue to become a better um, communicator towards people uh, as it is the thing I have always struggled with. <laughs> hey, we're, we're all only human. We're doing our best. Yeah. But uh, thanks so much for watching. This was fun. Yeah. We'll see you guys next week for our eldest. Make sure you started your reading already because it's a lot. Yeah, sorry. The next four weeks are going to be long. We're never going to do this again. We're never going to do a book a week again. Unless well, short. unless we've already like read it as well. Or I, I don't know. Even then, we kind of squeezed it in there. <laughs> yeah, so. it, that was that was tough. It's fine. Don't we skipped over it. some stuff. <laughs> but next week, eldest, we'll see you Tuesday, 11 a.m., same bat time, same bat channel. Until then, do something nerdy tonight, y'all. Bye, guys. Thank you, mods.